Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of uh, Fear of the Old Lore. Yesterday we finished off with the Untended Graves. That only took us four hours to talk about all the implications of that area. And probably we didn't even like finish everything that we could talk about, but yeah. That was a lot of fun, going over uh, one of the most enigmatic areas in the entire FromSoft catalog, really. So yeah, glad to have everyone back who's in so far. Nymphales, welcome back. SG, nice to see you again. Venom, as always. Gabriel. And Mortis, welcome all back to the stream. That hell of a crazy theory man is here. <laughs> Time to spend another three hours discussing lore. Uh, that's kind of the plan. So, uh, where did we finish off? Oh yeah, so we did all of the untended grave stuff. We talked to Ludleth. And... I think for now, like, we could just talk to the Firekeeper and learn more about everything, but... Uh, I'll just kind of leave that be for the moment, and then we'll just go back to uh, Lothric, and then continue on from there. And maybe after Lothric, we'll do Arc Dragon Peak next. I mean, there's not like a, a ton of um, options available to us other than that in the DLC, so. Hope everybody's having a good day. Uh, what's today, Tuesday? Yeah. Uh, you said, do you, you see what I said about Vendrick last night? Uh, are you asking if I read it, or are you asking if I understood what you're saying? Because I did read everything. I just <laughs> don't remember everything off the top of my head right now. Uh, SG, no, we actually killed Dancer. Was it before the Abyss Watchers? Uh, so yeah, we did an early dancer. Well, somewhat early dancer. Like, I was a little bit leveled up for it to be, like, a true early run. But yeah, I crashed on her quite a lot. Um, I was trying to get a new Be Right Back screen, uh, rendered right before streaming, but I didn't have enough time. Because uh, otherwise you would have seen, uh, some of the highlights of, uh, that attempt at an early dancer. Where she was just beating the shit out of me. So this is nothing here yet. I think we have to, like, drop down to access this. Okay, yeah, so it'll come back around later. So, yeah, we're back to Lothric. Uh, Consuming King's Garden was over that way. I'm pretty sure we grabbed everything that we could from here. Um, so I'm just going to, like, look back out the scenery. I don't think there's anything that stood out. I'm just, you know, trying to burn some stuff into the memory there. And SG, you said you had to get out of the stream because you were too tired. Uh, it's fine, man. Uh, so yeah, I appreciate whenever you guys can uh, drop in. So Gabriel says it was in the first or second stream. It was like the third or fourth because I was like, I don't want to just spend all day crashing on her. So I, I killed her over the weekend when I'm like not really scheduled to stream. So that way I could like devote the couple hours that it took to actually do it. Uh, this area is kind of cool. One of my uh, favorite spots. So we get some of the Lothric castle lights just uh, praying over like a, a corpse over there. Some beautiful stained glass windows and some thrall type uh, priests with their chimes buffing themselves over like a kind of mausoleum type spot. Oh, I guess he sees me. What a, what a jerk. Oh, this one's a red eyes. He got buffed by the Chime Man. Oh, damn. He has some HP. Oh, why did I do that? <laughs> of course. The binoculars got me. Maybe at one point I'll remember to actually put away my binoculars after I use them. <laughs> it's doubtful at this rate. Uh, Mortis, you said the part where Vendrick could manipulate the soul through his brother, uh, though his brother was much better at it. Oh yeah, I do remember you guys talking about like the soul transposition and stuff. And yeah, that was a pretty interesting uh, thread. And there was something else like that. Or maybe it was the video that, uh, was it Dark Wraith had me double check the one from JSF about the bastard and his curse. 
I finally did take the time to watch it, and I was kind of annoyed because uh, he would he ended up talking about like a, a lot of stuff that I would talk about in relation to Dark Souls Three, in, in namely with uh, Princess Mononoke, and uh, oh, that was weird. Princess Mononoke in a little bit of spirited way, <laughs> so I'm a little bit disappointed I ended up watching it. As a, uh, I need to roll. What am I doing? Oh, damn, he hits hard. Okay. I don't even think I picked up my souls. Yeah, it's whatever. Bell Maidens from Bloodborne, oof. Blank thing, welcome back. Uh, he said, better teach the bot to warn you about the binoculars. See, that would actually require me like to have an active uh, eye on chat, which I'm <laughs> terrible at just because of my, uh, my setup. Like, I, I have to literally turn my head to uh, look at the chat screen, so... I mean, it's not the worst idea, but it, it's a lot harder without the HUD just because I, I can't... I don't always remember if I did turn off my binoculars or if I just, like, left them on. I'm just going to kill the buff dude. I mean, the buffing dude. He's not actually buff. Maybe not. Holy shit. Bro! Okay, didn't have enough stamina. That was just, uh, bad. Well, that time I definitely didn't pick up the things. The Venom says, you can still make your video as the JSF hit all of his videos away, including the Bastard's Curse. I mean, I still will. It's just kind of a uh, funny that we have, like, we come to similar conclusions based on, like, what we know of Japanese culture a bit. So, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely appreciate his videos, and I do think it is a bit of a shame that he unlisted them, because, I mean, there is a lot of production value so to speak like put into that at least a lot of effort is just from the little that i know of like video editing from editing my own videos now that's it's a little bit of a, a shame that he didn't stick with it a bit better oh so. interesting should just parry that's not how you parry there we go Need to stop relying on the old habits. Because this isn't actually a Dark Souls 1 enemy. Oh, he's got a good poise. So they're a little bit harder to fish for the backstabs with. But, I mean, I just need to play better, honestly. No getting around that. So we get the Soul of the Crestfallen Knight. Let me get this really cool uh, sword here on display. So I don't know if like that knight is supposed to be praying to the sword or the person. It's a bit weird how that works out. And so this we can't access quite yet because why would we ever be able to use a, an elevator right off the rip? So yeah. Uh, Morta says you want to kill the bell ringers first. Yeah, I kill the bell maiden first. And Blue Mew, welcome back. It's it's been a bit since we've seen you, but uh, glad to have you again. And Morta says that the red-eyed Lothric knights are giving you Demon Souls flashbacks. Interesting. Yeah, because I, I still haven't played Demon Souls. I want to, but I mean, what are you gonna do when? Uh... Oh yeah, I forgot about that guy. Oh, this one has a. Okay. Holy shit. Oh, it's because he got buffed, probably. It's like, I didn't think my health was that low. So yeah, just a little bit of the growing pains of going into the new areas. I uh, don't know how much damage I'm taking exactly. Because I'm playing HUDless, but I'm stubborn enough where I won't change that. It'll, it'll just take a little bit of getting used to it. Like, honestly, this area isn't too difficult. It's just, uh, I don't know. I'm not playing super seriously right now. <laughs> Just having kind of a good time and not getting too bothered by it. So, okay, Bloomy, you said you just didn't comment on the last vid. Connection seems improved more so. Uh, on my end, yeah, we did actually get to upgrade the internet, but not, I don't think, enough to, um, what's it called? To, like, have a stable 1080p. So, 720p for now, I guess. There we go. 
Ooh, a chunk. That's uh, sweet. I whiffed. And now that I know that they delay that little charge, it's going to be easier. Oh shit! Forgot about his, uh, buddy. Why'd I do that? Some more shards. Not bad. I don't think there's anything too crazy going on here. We got some more of those uh, Headless Knight statues. Which are like also at like where we uh, found Emma and all that. So it's not anything too different either yet. So... <laughs> Turn on the HUD, it doesn't hurt. Uh, you're not wrong, but in terms of like trying to get more footage, and I did remember to actually hit record today. Uh, in terms of like getting more footage for videos, it's kind of nice to have it off. And so... Especially like for the bosses, like that makes it look way more cinematic. I thought there was a ladder that you went down. Must be misremembering. There's something. Oh, there's the bonfire. Okay, that's what it was. So yeah, these bonfires are super close together, which is kind of interesting. Uh, so th this spot right over there is a really good spot to farm with the bonfires, but... Let's see, we get some more of the Lothric emblems on these flags here, some more like cathedral style imagery, another uh, venerated sword, some more tables and stuff. Okay. Mortis says, in Demon Souls, the Red Eye Knights are the one of the scariest enemies in the game. Okay. So yeah, I, I didn't know that they had, I mean, it doesn't surprise me that they would have had Red Eye Knights at the very beginning, or not, like, at, at, even in Demon Souls. So this one's facing backwards. I'm trusting that it's not going to eat me. So we got the Hood of Prayer, Robe of Prayer, and the Skirt of Prayer. Okay, that's pretty sweet. Was this Emma's set? I don't remember. But yeah, going back to the Demon Souls things, it doesn't surprise me that uh, there were red-eyed enemies in there and that it's kind of a relic within pretty much all other games at this point. Cool, cool to know that they are there, though. Oh, P Prince Lothric's robe. The prince destined to be a Lord of Cinder was cherished by the royal family despite being born into illness, a frail and shriveled child. His waddling clothes were made of aged coarse cloth used in ancient prayer and are all that he has ever worn. So, that's pretty cool stuff. Uh, wait, where are its values? So, oh, it does a, a lot of magic resistance, uh, pretty much on par with like the other robes. It has a hell of a lot of curse resistance, that's interesting. I think that's like the highest we've gotten so far. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, where is my mirror set? <laughs> Why did I do that? That's way up there. I think the rest of it's going to be the same. He's got a skirt. No, that's Cornix's. Yeah, okay. Boy, is just really good at that. That one have... Or is it a hood that we got with it? Oh, okay. Check, checking this out for now. Not the worst. This on my back. Other than the flaming arrow.
Right, so this, yeah, okay, this is pretty much what I was thinking about doing. That looks kind of goofy, but uh, maybe a different pair of trousers. Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, I think that works. It's got pretty good values for us. Okay, sweet. Sorry for the old uh, fashion fashion souls again. Uh, Morta says the bonfire replacement in Lothar Castle is weird. Yeah, I agree. And Sunshin, welcome back to the stream again. Uh, Blink says you really wish they added more new enemies to this area. Yeah, um, I know, I know how you feel. I, it's kind of, I mean, at least you do start to get like the winged knights up in here, which is going to be kind of a pain in the ass, actually. Okay, I remember there's something, so that's what it was. Uh, this area, like when we first come to it, like this section specifically, definitely reminds me a lot of the um, Undead Berg in Dark Souls 1. Like oh, much more so than in... Uh, what's the other area we come to? The Undead Settlement. Another chunk. Yeah, so all these little uh, dudes, hollow guys, definitely reminds me of the Undead Berg as far as like the overall feel of this area goes. If I remember correctly, like the Winged Knight will jump down here, the Angel Knight, or maybe we can actually like, yeah. And yeah, this dude scared the crap out of me my first time playing through because it's like, what the hell is this? And just kind of comes out of nowhere. Oh, he throws those? That was a cool little sequence there. Wait. Titanite shard? I'm twinkling Titanite. Uh, I guess those are just kind of nondescript weaponry. Weapons, rather. Venom says, well, Prince Lothric was born cursed. Makes sense that they'd give him robes that would protect against his curse. Yeah. And he said, look at Lothric's clothes. If you remember correctly, yours and the ones he wears are different. If you remember correctly, Lothric's have the gold on the back melted while the set you can equip looks pristine. Okay. I mean, that would kind of make sense because he's like wearing the ones and he probably like linked in it. So let's go ahead and put on those robes. I'm probably not going to worry about the skirt. And you said th this one looks pristine? Just because, like, the the back doesn't get melted? I mean, it doesn't look pristine. Like, it lo does look pretty worn and ragged to a certain extent. But I, would, I wouldn't be surprised, like, if his boss set looks, like, way, way worse. Okay, so this was what I was kind of thinking. So this is going to be kind of cool here. So we got like a, an angel knight, a winged knight. Not entirely sure what to call those guys. So we get the Winged Knight set from this dude in front of the Winged Knight painting. That's interesting. Winged Knight. Okay. The Sacred Bloom Shield. Interesting. I wasn't expecting like a, a much better item right there. Okay. Time to look, look at all that cool stuff. Welcome back, Old Augusto. <laughs> Holy fats. Yeah. Uh, Mortis says the axes this guy drops are extremely good. And Venom says, you seem to recall this led people to debate back when the game released whether Lothric refused to link the flame or whether he had already done so like Ludleth and just refused to do it again. Um, I I could see arguments going either way. I think with the throne already there, though, it leads me to believe he should have already linked. I, I would have to look at the fight again because if he embers up after he gets his little brother. So my initial reaction, I think, is that he most likely linked. And Elda says, if Ludleth refused to sacrifice for the flame a second time, would he be beefier? <laughs> Bat Angel Knights. 
Uh, Behringer Leather Company, welcome to the stream. He said, is anyone else getting weird sound like skips and silence? Uh, thank you for letting me know. Let me double check my OBS. It could just be maybe part of my mic settings. But, um, yeah, I'm not really dropping too many frames. So, yeah, let me know if you guys are having some sound issues, because definitely don't want that. So what were you looking at? The winged set. Remember this one because it's got a goofy looking face. So this is armor of the winged knights who swore themselves to the angels. Worship of the, worship of the divine messengers was viewed as heresy in Lathric and unrecognized by any of the three pillars of rule. This is believed to be why Gertrude, the heavenly daughter, was imprisoned in the lofty cell of the Grand Archives. So that's some pretty important information that will become relevant a bit later. And it's also important to note that the Winged Knights aren't related to the rule of Lothric to a degree, which is going to be a little bit weird to kind of reconcile. Um, I don't remember if you can kite the Winged Knights later on to like kill the Hollows up by the top of the, the castle, but we'll, we'll see. All right, yeah, Behringer, you might just need to uh, refresh the page or just pause it for a second and let it, like, buffer, maybe. But, yeah, thanks for trying to let me know if you were having issues. I appreciate that. So, um, SG says it looks like the enemy that you just killed. Yes, so, yeah, sorry, I was going to point that out as well. The Winged Knight set is uh, pretty much related to those uh, fat knight dudes that we just killed. Where is it on this? Oh, there it is. Okay, yeah. Okay, so it's pretty much the exact same set. Like, you can see that um, it is the the same dudes that we just fought, or the one dude that we just fought, really. And this just drops us back down to where we were, if I remember correctly. Maybe I don't remember correctly. <laughs> yeah, that, that looks like a death floor, so it's this way. Okay. Wait. Uh, we've taken a little damage. So that one blocks Estus recovery, if I remember correctly. Oh, this spot was always a pain in the ass. Oh. Ow. <laughs> I should have healed. <laughs> And Mortis says, so they're connected to the Ring City then? The the Wing Knights? I don't think so. Um, we'll see a bit more of that later on. Like, I don't remember a lot of the Ring City of lore off the top of my head. <laughs> Should probably... Oh, I forgot to loot this. Oh, it makes sense because those dudes distracted me. Bruh. another chunk i might be able to upgrade if not now pretty soon at this rate oh that didn't even kill him the first time around i was trying to backstab but i missed obviously No, I meant, like, I should have healed when I looked at my HP and saw that it was, like, 700 before going down there. But that didn't backstab. There we go. So, yeah, it's the same as the armored set that we just got. Oh, another chunk. Holy crap.
Should get our echoes or souls. Wow. Souls over here. Oh, I died. Okay, that thing hits harder than I was expecting. Uh, Elder Gusta says that winged knights might have had their faith inspired by the words of a primordial serpent who are depicted as angels and statues. Maybe framed because Koth went for the Sable Church. Yeah, we'll see a couple of those statues in a little bit. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up for now. Um, yeah, I don't really know if the winged knights are supposed to have been related to the Ring City. This dude's trying to get us ganked. Uh, it's too slow. And then Faley says that the winged knight statues remind you of like the winged hussars in Poland. Yeah, they might have been inspired by that a little bit. There we go. Oh, I missed. And uh, that was a failed backstab. Oh, God. <laughs> this luck. I thought I was gonna miss again and then get punished. So we we got the uh, twin axes. So I think I need to heal again. And uh, I'll probably regret not healing later, but I'm not gonna do it. So that kind of works out. <laughs> So, paired beheading axes wielded by the winged knights who swore themselves to the angels. These axes, more befitting of an executioner than a, than a knight, are indented to fit the human body. So yeah, you can see that these are like the ones that they wield. And it's got a cool uh, spinning weapon art that you can use with it. So, I guess not like a ton of information about them. And so, uh, maybe if I actually like kill these things and don't die myself? Ow. Oh my god. I mean, I could have rolled. I was just... My my soul blood splatter <laughs> got the better of my greed. Oh, that's annoying, because that was actually a decent amount of souls at that point. Probably enough to level up. Maybe once or twice. God of Spaghetti, welcome back. He said, praise the lore through. At this point, it's not so much of a lore through as it is a death through. <laughs> I'm playing really badly right now. <laughs> Uh, more just says those are the best axes in the game. They're way too strong. <laughs> Ultra combo. I know, man. Happy feet. Oh my god. I didn't have enough stamina. Yeah, I might switch back to the Chlorin Thearing just because this is actually kind of screwing me up. Why didn't I just parry that? Oi, oi, oi. Oh, I did it the wrong way. Oh my gosh. All 
All right, all right, all right. We'll, we'll get it, we'll get it, we'll get it. I'm pretty sure, like, this way isn't even where I want to go right now. I'm just being stubborn. Who's jumping now? There we go. Alright. Screw you guys. Yeah, so that's something I need to come back for later. Okay. Holy crap. He almost done got me. Night Night Shard. That's cool. Oh, that's just his arm. I thought he was like stabbed by something. Large soul of a wary warrior. I'll talk about those uh, pilgrim butterflies in a, in a moment here. I think we get ganked. Yeah. Ooh, two chunks. Holy crap. That's a lot of chunks. Alright, so this might be as good a spot as any to talk about that. <laughs> Not that there's like a ton to talk about. So yeah, these uh, flying things over here are called pilgrim butterflies. And so they might be related to pilgrims, obviously. So this might be what their pilgrimage is culminated in. Them kind of releasing these winged creatures from their backs, from like the little humps on their backs, and transforming into these. And apparently these can possess armor and cause them to be animated, as we'll see with, like, the boss in the nearby area. It's kind of weird how it all, like, fits together somewhat. Um, yeah, other than that, there's really not, like, a ton of information. So I guess we could also say, like, if they're related to the Pilgrims of Londor, maybe, like, the Sable Church of Londor is supposed to have some connection to the Pilgrims and the Pilgrim Butterflies. And it looks like they're trying to converge over a specific place over here, but kind of not really also at the same time. Maybe you're like flying towards like Lothric. It's, it's weird. I don't, I don't really know what to make of them and we'll be a tiny bit about them, but other than that, not too much else. Uh, Kasky asks, uh, why is blood green? Uh, so typically in this game, um, I'm, I don't actually know. Like in Bloodborne, when the blood was green, it's because it's like all poisonous. And I know like when the, uh, Ashen one gets hit, like we kind of bleed that kind of grayish green color as well. So I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> Alda Gusto says your lips are so chapped from playing Bloodborne for the first time this weekend. Yeah, and how'd it go? Um, Mortis says, oh yeah, what's with the Dark Sun other than it being a Pale Blood Moon reference? Oh yeah, duh. Why shouldn't I talk about the, the Eclipse while we're at it? So uh, when we do look over at this uh, eclipse over here this will become present again later at the very end of the game when you fight like the soul of cinder uh it seems like this eclipse is supposed to be both metaphorically and literally connected to the kiln of the first flame and the first flame itself like the little tendril of red that kind of drops down from it does connect to the first flame that you will uh, inherit or um, link at the end of the game. So the hollow sign itself, or the eclipse itself could be representative of both the the ring of fire, what's it called? The dark sign, as well as like the dark sigil. So fire is kind of controlling the, the darkness from seeping out maybe. And that could be related to the curse that Gwyn has placed on people, maybe it's related to that. It's kind of hard to say, but um, let's check our dark sign here. And then grab some water. So the dark sign is the sign of an accursed undead. The dark sign returns its bearer to the last bonfire rested at, or the bonfire at Firelink Shrine, but at the cost of all souls held. Carriers of the dark sign are, are reborn after death, and eventually lose their minds, turning hollow. And so it is they are driven from their homelands. So if we get rid of that, like we can see that it does resemble that. And then when we combine that imagery with the dark sigil, potentially in the middle, uh, 
Black ape and coal in the flesh that resembles the brand of an undead. The darkness of humanity seeps from this bottomless pitch black hole, the gap filled by the accumulation of the curse. This dark sigil will never heal, but there is a tale of a told of a firekeeper who returned from the abyss and brought great comfort to a bearer of the curse. So if we just take that imagery of like the dark sign and the dark sigil as being kind of represented by their links to the bonfire in the first flame, like you could also interpret this eclipse as a symbol of the first flame and it's kind of waning power because it's being eclipsed by something else maybe so once we link the flame i'm pretty sure this maybe it doesn't disappear in this game but like generally like once the flame is linked again it, it should like make everything go back to normal although in dark souls 3 like that's kind of not really the story that they go for i don't think uh, 33 Max Man, welcome to the stream. He said, Is the Dark Sign a Pale Blood Moon reference? You thought it was clear representation of the Dark Sign. No, I, I think they are meant to be different, but for whatever reason, they really do like to tie in like the cosmic imagery into their games. So I, I also wouldn't be surprised if there was something similar in uh, Demon Souls at this rate. But as I said before, I haven't played it, so somebody else in chat would also have to uh, confirm or deny that. And Blue Mew says, It's also a berserk, berserk nod. Yeah, um... I mean, Tales of the Eclipse are a really big thing in just, like, worldly folklore in general, so. Uh, Berserk used it. I mean, it, it's used in, in tons of stories, but <laughs> I can't th seem to think of any off the top of my head. Kasky says that you saw a theory about the pilgrim butterflies becoming angels like the p pilgrim in Drag, drag Keep. And so, yeah, there is also that possibility as well, because we do see that some pilgrims will become the angels in the Drag Heap. And to me, they do. I mean, they're they're similar in a way, but I think they're different to some extent. Because the way that they function, like the way that they fly, looks different. And of course, maybe they're just like in more of an infant type state right now. But yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe uh, those who believe in what the pilgrims of Londor believe in will turn into these pilgrim butterflies, whereas like. People who follow the angelic faith can turn into angels, as well as, like, uh, people who believe in, like, Velka, they might turn into crows, or if they believe in demons, perhaps the Gru. So there is that component where, like, faith can literally shape uh, how beings develop in these games, I guess. So this is a dead end right here, but it gives us incentive to explore more with the body hanging down. Then we get to our next bonfire over here. I think I'm gonna go back to the Firelink Shrine. Uh, I don't think I can level up now since I lost all those souls, but I think I might be able to upgrade the weapon. Oh, and maybe turn in my Esther Shard that I probably forgot about again. Because <laughs> I always did that last stream. Alright, so Mortis says that you can see it as a Pale Blood Moon reference even though they mean different things. And he said that Dark Souls 3 is a love letter to the Soulsborne games as a thank you for the love of the games. And also that Demon Souls doesn't have anything like it. Okay. Thank you guys. Yeah, okay. I was just looking at how much more damage it'll do. So we're not going to be able to... Wait, we can? Oh yeah, it goes up to 15, doesn't it? Oh no, Titanite Knight's Lab, never mind. Forgot... Oh, we got one from uh, Siegvard. So yeah, we're going to do a lot more damage now. Holy crap. Oh, I almost forgot. So we already sent Grey Rat over there. I don't think there's anything, but it looks weirdly shiny, even though I know that's not an item. All right, just a pot. And maybe we got more ashes for her? I don't remember. Ah. Okay, no. Ashen break. Is it? Well, very well. Then take no. Oh, definitely not enough. Farewell, Probably after upgrading. I mean, I don't think we we're close uh -huh. before, but we're way far away now. 
<sighs> what else would I want to buy right now? Ashen one. Oh. <laughs> okay. That'll be good for now, I think. So that was Lothar Castle. Now we go to the Dragon Barracks. Interesting. I wonder if it's supposed to be Dragoon Barracks. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if it was Dragon Barracks either, but not too big a deal. Uh, Venom says, Your biggest disappointment with this game is that the sun bleeding never went anywhere. Probably the most theorized image before the game is released, and it kind of leads nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand. And it, it's kind of weird, like, what triggers it. You have to kill three of the Lords of Cinder for that to happen, maybe. Um, if I reload the save and, like, do the rest of Henri's quest with, like, Aldrich and whatnot, um, I would kill Aldrich and then Yorm to see whether or not we get summoned to, like, uh, Emma's spot after having killed the other Lords of Cinder. Because it is weird that, like... After we kill them, that everything changes, but I, I'm not entirely sure what to make of that. Uh, Keebler, welcome back. You said, yo, 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 yourself. <laughs> uh, Blue Mew says, yeah, they're an occult symbol, an event used in some rituals. And Cassie asks if I went to the DLC already. Uh, sort of. We did accidentally go into the Painted World, but I just went to the first bonfire and back. So I'll probably do that after... The stuff with um, Lothric and Arc Dragon Peak, just because the DLC is a uh, pretty a big boy mode. <laughs> Elder Gusta says, "If you believe in Sullivan, dogs cause dogs are neat." Effervescent says, uh, "There's way too many bonfires in this area. If this was Demon Souls, there'd be a bonfire at the dancer and one before the archives, and that'd be it." Uh, yeah, especially like with. The extra bonfire after killing uh, the Dragon Slayer armor and then the one right in the archives, it's like, what the hell is going on? Like, it definitely, it doesn't even, like, really feel like a traditional uh, Dark Souls layout because of how many bonfires there are in such close proximity. So, maybe it's a relic of, like, them not having good ideas of where they wanted to go with it. Uh, which way do I want to deal with things for now? So maybe I should show this off. Uh, yeah, at least for the footage. So Mortis says there are a lot of Demon Souls references in Lothar Castle. Effervescent says it makes the elevator shortcut right before the Dragon Slayer armor pretty much redundant. Yeah. Uh, 33 Max says, been watching my Bloodborne series as well. Very good stuff. Figured you'd join in the stream and interact a bit so the YouTube algorithm picks me up some more. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So yeah, just in case uh, we do have some more new people, uh, let me... Use my little Nightbot DS3 command. As, uh, it's it's probably clear that I'm not nearly as familiar with uh, Dark Souls as I am Bloodborne, but I mean, that's fine. Part of the point of the stream is to learn things as we go and just kind of uh, chill out, have a good time, uh, get some footage for future videos if I do decide to make more in-depth uh, Dark Souls stuff. So yeah, I mean, this connects back down. Okay, so here we go. Probably one of the cooler parts of the game, but also, like, one of the most annoying shit. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Still feels super off-center. Or maybe it's just, like, the castle itself. Oh, yeah, kinda. This will kinda work, maybe. So yeah, this is the attempt to get some footage if I ever need to like set up Lothar Castle for whatever reason, as well as this kind of a uh, messed up wyvern over here. So this is going to hurt. Fuck! I totally messed that up. I thought there were two, but I didn't remember how the other one comes down. And so now I think he's permanently down. I hope he flies down again, because otherwise I'm going to be kind of upset that I screwed that up. Because uh, I'm trying to remember the last place I actually, like, save scummed. Oh, actually... Oh, never mind. 
Because then I'd have to go grind all the chunks again. So yeah, I'll just leave it as it is, maybe. And just settle. Fuck, yeah, it's totally there now. So I'll just kind of look at chat for right now. Uh, Saturn, welcome back to the stream. I did see you uh, step in before. So... Mortis says, the area right before the Twin Princess is taken straight from Demon Souls. And Elda asks, do I think the jeweled wizards lizards crawl between the worlds and that is why they disappear? Titanite is like a really, is like a reality linchpin or after all? You know, I never really thought about that, the fact that they disappear. Um, I think you might be onto something there because I, I think that's pretty much how like the Wandering mad, mad, Madness is or the Wandering Nightmares work in Bloodborne. So that's kind of an interesting idea that um, Titanite is the reality linchpin and so that going back to the whole idea with like titanite and minerals like i think there's the good possibility that like the dragon scales are also made out of titanite i don't remember what makes me think that but i think i read something in dark souls 2 about that um maybe not <laughs> so mortis says you do get summoned if you kill yorm last okay and Max says, yeah, two bonfires literally inside of each other was an interesting choice. And Soliloquy says, the whole putting a bonfire in the boss arena is a lazy copy-paste idea from Bloodborne. Uh, there, there's value in it, but here they definitely, like, overdid it. They should have gotten rid of the one right in front of the archives, at least. As well as the one in, the, like, the little al alcove. Like, I feel like you're kind of right for the most part with the... The bonfires being way too close to each other so i'm trying to think of where i'd want to set it up i'd probably have gotten rid of uh this bonfire and maybe moved it behind the dragons or something like in that little area over there that might work i don't know i mean it makes sense why they put one here just because these uh wyverns are real pains in the asses Oh, I'm trying to I'm trying to pull out my Estus or not Estus my uh, binoculars. So yeah, we get these uh, dragons over here, wyverns. I keep screwing that up. And I mean, we can go around, but it's just kind of funny, like compared to the one in Dark Souls One, just how much more nerfed these ones are. I think you can actually like kill them with enough arrows as well. I don't know if that's the intended strat, or if you can go up to the top of the building and kill them that way. I'll just, uh... Die right there for that. Just for the footage. Oh, that's gonna be annoying to get my... <laughs> 2500 souls. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Uh, Victorious, welcome back to the stream. It's been a minute. Uh, hey, LP, hey, chat, big love. Thank you. Nice to see you again. And uh, I like the, the little emoji. <laughs> uh, Mortis says, the area with the pus infected drakes is a reference to what the Azure Dragon does in Demon Souls. Okay. Extra crispy ashen one. Uh, Blank asks, what do I think of sorcery builds? I mean, I've never actually done the magic in any of the Dark Souls games, so it's kind of hard for me to say. Like, uh... I'm a little too impatient to like deal with the startup of trying to like get the builds working properly. So I've pretty much always done dex builds. And so at least for this run of Dark Souls 3, this is my first time using like a, a pure strength, a big sword build, which has been interesting so far. Definitely a different dynamic. A blue Mew says, you think they were trying to make it easier on current gamers? M maybe. El Gusto says that Dark Souls 2 had the bonfires in the boss arenas. And you ask if these uh, wyverns are mates. I think that's a possibility, but I mean, that would also mean that they have sexes. So maybe, because I mean, you have to get wyverns from somewhere. Um, one of the possibilities is that like these wyverns could be related to the pus of men. It's like, it's like little horns over there are kind of reminiscent to the little kind of grayish scales that will pop up on the pus of men we can see at times so there's that possibility i don't know how strongly i believe that but 
I do know that's a pretty prominent theory in the lore community, and I think it's an interesting one, so I'll definitely share it. And Venom says, the loss of souls makes your wallet hurt. Dark Souls 2 did not have bonfires in the boss arenas? I thought they did, because, like, I remember killing the scorpion lady. I'm pretty sure a bonfire appears after her. Um, same with the dude in the ship. Yeah, I'm not sure. But Keebler says, you think you kill them by killing the pus of men at their feet? I don't think so, but that'd be interesting. Let's see. So, yeah. Speaking of the pus of men, one of the ways that you can just kind of avoid all these uh, Drake bullshits is to just drop down here, this area. Get another chunk. And so those things down there are pus of men, aren't they? Not all of them, but I think some of them are. So yeah, I'm not going to drop down there quite yet. Oh, this one's going to... Hopefully we'll be able to show it off a bit more. What the f- Him? Yeah. No, because that one was fire. Oh, so it was him. That was- so it's got like an exploding bolt. <laughs> of course, the damn, uh... Binoculars almost getting me. So yeah, I'm gonna try to take a good look at that Puss of Man right there. To compare like the the scales on it versus like the wyvern from up above. Weird. Okay. Got a great axe. Okay, so it's from up there, right? Oh, okay, over there. Not gonna worry about that for now. So, see those like little white, grayish things coming off the side of it? That might be related to uh, what we see going on with this wyvern over here. Hopefully this works. Damn it. So I think it's lost its aggro, which would be fantastic, actually. Uh, okay. <laughs> so this might be a good time to pan up if I can actually scroll all the way up. Alright, that should be good enough. So I'm not going to deal with that yet if I don't have to. Alright, and, and I'll catch up with you guys right now. Okay, so Venom says, One of the dragons has pus of man coming out of his foot. Interesting. Okay, I totally missed that, I guess. Um, I'll try to take another look. Uh, FIG says, currently playing Donkey Kong 64. How do you think Cranky Kong's potions relate to Estus flasks? Uh, probably uh, not as good because, you know, Estus is more heat. <laughs> and Elda says to Venom that you think the lesser dragons mate, but everlasting dragons probably didn't. Yeah, I don't think the ones before, like, the flame became a thing uh, were able to mate, but who knows for sure. Uh, Mortis says they are infected by the pus of men. Okay. 
Right, so FIG has to lurk. You got to type. Just need to need to be publicly silly for a second. Well, thank you. I appreciate you stepping in as always. And uh, have a good day. If you if you uh, don't come back and say anything else. Uh, Maxman says, so is it a safe assumption that these dragons were two of the ones that were tamed and ridden by Lothric knights since they're th still protecting the castle and all? So it's a bit weird. I think there might be an item description that kind of hints that like uh, they were trying to create and tame wyverns, which is uh, what we get here. So it's a possibility, and I think this might actually be somebody's like in the lore community's headcanon that they were trying to cultivate the pus of men so they, that they could ride them. I don't know how to feel about that. So I think that's the way we need to go. So we're going to go this way for now. And I think this way is a dead end. Two knights over here. I'm praying. I've been screwing up my backstab super bad. Fuck. Wait. There's tight knight shards. Oh, and then we already messed up the armor that they were like kind of uh, praying towards. Unless there's something else. I'm trying to remember what that item is. I know we can like come down way later, and that'll like kind of be that. But of a nameless soldier. Is that the same dude that was over here? Probably. Okay. Raw gem. We might be able to get the advantage. Maybe not. Okay. And I know downstairs there's like the other like outrider knight type thing. I think this one can hit us from here. Not. My souls. That's that's exactly what I get. Well, I got him. That's the important thing, right? Uh, cataclysmic uh, acedia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Welcome to the stream. You said, you think they got infected via their close proximity to man. So yeah, there's also the poss possibility that they were previously men and that they might be like harvested or whatever, cultivated by the Knights of Lothric. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that idea in general. Like, I mean, I, I don't like uh, disbelieve it. I just don't know how I really feel about it. And so, I, I will try to check out like the pus on their feet in just a second here. Ah! Full stop. Let this one fall down. I'm gonna die because I can't heal right now. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, I thought I was about to get shot. That's cool animation there. So back to where we were. I guess it really did fall. Okay, that's cool for me. So I think now if we YOLO it... Oh, we don't need to YOLO it. Wait. Okay. And... Where were we? Oof, there's a lot to catch up on. Mortis says, No, the guy in the ship led to a cutscene that took you to the back of the Bastille, which had a bonfire, and the bonfire after the Scorpioness was in the doors of Pharos. So they just did it smarter but i mean for all intents and purposes they kind of did have the bonfires at 
behind the bosses. So you're not entirely wrong. Uh, Zephyl says only the four bosses with the Lord Souls have a bonfire immediately after the arena. These bonfires only teleport you to Majula. Okay. Elda says you will bet originally the Puss of Men may have been new primordial serpents on an early draft. Oh, the red eye orbs you think are, provo are evoking the eyes of the primordial serpents. Cassie says the white horns from the Puss of Man resemble the horns of Manus and the spikes from the Four Kings. Do you think it's more of a dark related thing? I mean, that's a fair possibility too. Uh, their flesh resembles primordial serpent flesh, and didn't we have early leaked trailers with primordial serpents in 3? Kind of. Uh, so they were like winged serpents, which is kind of a, a different motif, which are, I mean, like, a winged serpent is essentially like a, a primordial stage of a dragon as far as, like, mythology goes, because it represents the, like, the unity of ruling over the land, because they're a snake, and the skies, because they have, like, bird wings. Uh, Venom says, yes, and Lance has managed to put back in the game, or put them back in the game. It seems very close to release. The winged serpents were replaced by the pilgrim butterflies. Interesting. Uh, Kasky said, like all serpents bow to you in the Dark Lord ending, Koth is the Dark Stalker, and says Fromt lost his sense and befriended Gwyn, so, yeah. Elder says, you do think that all primordial serpents connect you to the ultimate abyss at the ass end, like all the heads of the same body, like just a, a big ass hydra or a scylla. Uh, Maxman says, you think it's interesting that the wyverns up and die after you kill the fuss of man that is connected to each one? Were the wyverns dead and being controlled, or is there some form of symbiosis? Uh, I think there's probably like a, a symbiosis that like, perhaps the real form of men is dragons, and so... Ooh, that was fast. I don't think you can backstab this, can you? That was weird. Need to play better. That's not playing better. Alright, that, that's fine, though. Not the worst outcome to die after retrieving souls, yeah. <laughs> Venom says dragons are just super ticklish so when you remove the puss of man from their feet they can peacefully move on that's uh that's the true Miyazaki foot lore right there isn't it hot feet puss picks for the interwebs that was a sentence that would have been absolutely free to not type <laughs> Very, very wholesome dragon deaths. 100 out of 100. Dying before retrieving souls is the opposite of a good day. Indeed. Damn it. Oh god. So speaking of the, the not good times. Yeah, I'm just going to run past them. Now the Venom says, pisses off your OCD so much, you can't stand losing currency <laughs> right after I do that. Uh, I can't even play without the Silver Serpent ring equipped. It's what a baby vort killed, yeah. It's a baby vort would have killed. Okay, here we go. Alright, actually like focus a little bit. I've I've been dying way too much. Part of it is because I forget my strat of how I first approached this area. But we could go that way. I don't want to do that yet, though. Let's grab all zero of my souls. Holy shit. That killed me. I'm not going to defend myself, I'll just say I thought I was going to get the backstab. I should just parry instead. I keep saying that, but failing to actually do it. Ditch the shield, brace the gunk. Yeah, I probably should at this point with a... Like, if I'm not parrying with it, like, why have it? Especially since we did just upgrade the weapon, I'll probably deal a crap ton of damage. Ah, 
Ow. I didn't see it. Whatever. And then I didn't even grab the souls. Holy shit. Alright, so that's not how you play better. Alright, I'll, I'll just play it smarter, or just run past them all. Oi, oi, oi. I've died a lot in this area. Like, this I think is like the worst I've just crashed on a non-boss in the game. <laughs> I guess it's just like after untended, <laughs> just losing the motivation to play as much. Not really, though. It's a cool little sword there. I should have uh, gone faster. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so I guess we're going this way this time. Chunk. Chunk. So this dude's gonna transform. Oh god. What an epic whiff. And I'm already low on HP. Elder Gusto says, yeah, the game teaches you to let go of your lost souls and blood echoes so you can become a, a dragon in real life. Can't believe I, I fucked up that pus so badly. Not like fucked up in the good way. Finally. Holy crap, I don't know why that seemed so hard the past eight runs. <sighs> Probably because I was actually just trying to YOLO it instead of uh, playing as though I only did have one life. Alright, alright, alright. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, I know if I use the fire on the pusses, they'll uh, die, but my original goal was just to kill him before he transformed, but I just totally whiffed the shit out of that. Here with the rapier, which kind of matches the... Straight sword that we got from the one over by the... I always forget what the area is called before, like, the Farron Swamp. Crucifixion Woods? Holy crap, I remembered it. Okay, yeah. So... That one points backwards, so that one's... Oh, wait, so Mimics point to you, and then the ones that don't point back. I thought I was about to get eaten. Spirit Tree Crash Shield. Oh, I forgot to read that other shield, too. So this kind of works out. And so... Can't see... Chain. I don't think there was a Mimic down here. Okay. Twinkling Titanite. That one looks like it's pointing backwards. Wait. Okay. I want to get away from all this, like, ambient noise real quick. Alright, that'll probably be a bit better. 
So we picked up this one, and what else was it? Okay, the Sacred Bloom Sheet. Okay. Let me catch up, because that was a little bit bad. Shields and gender passivity. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Captini, welcome back. You said, good old Dark Souls regression. Once you start losing, you just keep getting worse and worse and never improve. Uh, Morta says, any reason for why the dragon form in this game is an anorexic goat? Uh, you know, it's trying to watch its figure. Infant Manatee, welcome back to the stream. You said, if you use fire in the Puss of Man, they, they ride around. So I did read that one. Okay. So yeah, I, I just was trying to kill it before it transformed, but I completely missed my attack. So uh, you're, you're definitely not wrong, and I appreciate the tip. They look like inbred Barney dinos, the Puss of Man, that is. Uh, Soliloquy says, you wish there was more frost weapons in the game, or even frost infusing gems or frost resins. Yeah. <laughs> you have a frost spell to coat your weapon. That spell is a waste of an attunement slot. Plus, it's no good for pure melee builds. Test out the sleep sleepy mimic trick for the camera. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. You guys need to remind me. So, what do I need to do for that? I need to throw a Lloyd Talisman at it when we find one again? Because I'm probably going to forget. So, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. So this is a, a treasure antique, treasured antique of the Way of White, known to some as the Sorcerer's Bane. The large blossom design that graces the shield is said to be a sacred flame, and the shield is blessed with high magic protection. Interesting. So it's possible that the Lothric people were affiliated with the Way of White at some point, and then that probably got changed to the Angelic Faith, and then, I don't know, we don't find any of the evangelists and whatnot up here, so. I wonder if this was in the other games. It wouldn't surprise me. It's interesting that it says it's supposed to resemble a flame. It kind of reminds me of the lock shield from Bloodborne, but uh, obviously different. So this tree, spirit tree crest shield, the dragon crest shield, Oh, I've had the actual regular crush shield on, so I've wanted this one on for a while. Forgot, I switched it. So, this is a knight shield engraved with a crest depicting a spirit tree. One of the enchanted blue shields. The spirit tree crest shield greatly reduces lightning damage. Okay, I, th I think I read that properly. But yeah, it definitely has a lot more magic, or er, lightning resistance. I don't think there's anything too lightning focused here right now, but it'll be useful against the, um, the nameless king. The Storm Ruler. What else did we pick up? The Rapier. That's the Straight Sword. It's kind of weird how they like have them organized. I would have like put the Rapiers between, like the daggers and, and the long swords honestly but that's just me this is the thrusting sword bestowed upon the outrider knights of the boreal valley this weapon is shrouded in frost and causes frostbite every outrider knight one day devolves into a beast constantly haunted by pontiff sullivan's black eyes so i looked at the japanese on one of the irithil weapons and um when it says constantly hounded by Pontiff Sullivan's black eyes, I think that's just a little bit of a liberal localization to tie the imagery of dogs and whatnot to the beasts, but it's more like they're being stimulated by uh, the effects of Sullivan's eyes on them, from what I remember. Okay. And Maxman says it is the Lloyd's Talisman at the Mimic. You believe you can keep throwing the talismans to farm a Mimic for the symbol of avarice? Well, I don't need to farm one because uh, it turns out like having 11 luck is the is the meta luck build in the game. Because we already, we already picked one up. They are stimulated by Voyeur Soli. Yeah, with his uh, googly eyes. So now we have our, our damn dragon shield back on that'll help resist the, the fire, not that it's too important right now. I think I can just YOLO sprint the back the next room. I don't remember if I healed though. And I waited too long. I think. Maybe not. I don't know. Can I see the pus 
from its feet on this angle? Oh, that's its tail. Interesting. I want a YOLO. Oh, that was a successful yo yo yolo yo yo oh it's this spot okay so do so i want to go back down to the bottom now i don't remember how ah screw it okay so no this is probably the way that i want it hard soul the nameless soldier I think that ladder was super easy to miss. That was weird. Oh, god damn it. The one time I didn't want to backstab. Oh. What the hell? So they chased me all the way up here. Okay, so this is how you point it out. So yeah, I guess there is that kind of explicit connection between the Puss of Men and the Wyverns then. That's cool, I didn't know that. I thought it was just more like, you know, a game theory kind of thing. So, I better not regret this. Okay, that's cool. So it gets another head? That's ridiculous. That goes kind of far back. Maybe from here? Interesting. Yeah, I'm glad you guys told me about that, because I think... I, I don't know if I would have, like... I, I mean, I probably would have done the same stuff, but... Still, I, pre I appreciate that that information there. That's crazy, holy shit. Night Night Chunk in the Ember, so that kills it. That one's still aggro now. Or that one's dead too? What the fuck, it kills both of them? That doesn't make any sense. What the hell is going on here, guys? It's blowing my mind. All right, uh, can I actually just drop back down from there? Do I need to? Okay. All right, I'll catch up with you guys after I see if this thing is well and truly dead. What the hell? That's crazy. Yeah, I had no idea. I think I just shot the shit out of him because, like, it worked on the other wyvern from way earlier when I when I first played through this area. Holy crap. Okay. Uh, Soliloquy says, it's weird how much your luck stat affects the drop rate, although it says it barely affects item discovery. You've picked up so much more with your cleric at luck 13 versus your knight at luck 7. They really should have done more with the luck stat than just bleed slash hollow builds. Uh, it's interesting that they did anything with the luck stat at all, just because it wasn't really as much of a thing in Dark Souls 1. Uh, Maxman says, wasn't a luck build with Henri sword and bleed effect broken at some point? Yeah. And, uh... 
Effervescent says the launch luck builds were broken. You mean there should have been more special weapons that scaled with luck? Okay. And Elda says maybe it's the pus of dragons, a very similar pus, but tastes way different. Were they connected somewhere? No, I mean, like, we saw that this wyvern... Well, I mean, I screwed up actually showing it, like, come land down, which is really unfortunate, honestly, but... Like, it, it came from the sky, because it wasn't here before, and it landed down, so, like... I have no idea why it was so connected to the green one. Uh... Yeah. Really weird stuff there. Okay, so the other dragon is just passive now until I get to its pus? That's still weird to me, though. Well, can't wait to see that, then. Maybe one with shed skin? Uh, Max says, Strange, you thought the dragons only died after killing them or their pus, but it seems they die as soon as the pus comes out, the more you know. You can also walk right... Oh, okay, actually, that would have been cool. Holy shit, if we, um... First hit the pus, then ran outside to see if the one dragon was uh, still active on the outside. Damn, I wish I would have saved before coming to this area. Obviously, like, to get the footage of the one wyvern falling down, but... Uh, Bjarki, welcome to the stream. You said you can also walk right through the dead dragon like you're transparent, yeah. Uh... G -g Ghost dragon! Luck builds are awesome. You all need to do a blood bandit knife run. And Soliloquy says, Bleed Bills used to be very good for PvP, but they got nerfed around the time the DLC came out. Uh, which... Okay, so this isn't the way forward quite yet. This just kind of connects back into everything, if I remember correctly. Finite right, Chunk. Get the little dude over there. Twinkling. Titanite. Right, And a scale. Oh, I was super low. Oh, gravity would have definitely killed me. I shouldn't have healed. That'll like go back in the, the highlight reel there. You get ganked by more than, than just those two. Oh, I think there is another dude in here as well. Okay, maybe not. So this is what we would have gotten. Shit, why'd I come back out here? That was a bad idea. So, yeah, I was trying to say this is what would have, uh, like where we would have come back to. Had, uh, I'd gone through the door and not died to this pus of man right over here. So, yeah, okay, we've got super extra confirmation that the pus of men are connected to the wyverns. More lightning urns. Maybe that's what I was thinking of? Or maybe it's in the next area. Oh. So I was right. If I remember correctly, you can probably just like blow up those barrels with uh, an urn of some sort. Is he just patrolling? Is he gonna find me? Okay, I guess so. Oof. Oof. That was a bad roll on my part. That's fine, though. Uh, Spooky Boy, welcome to the stream. You said you feel like Two Serpents is important mythology. Rod of uh, Ascalifus. <laughs> Ascalipsis. I don't really know how to read that. Ascalipsis? Ascalipsis comes to mind. You don't remember how to spell it? Don't make fun of it. Okay, so 
I, I think I know who you're talking about. I don't remember how it's spelled off the top of my head. Uh, but I do know what you're talking about. Um, like the, the Mercury symbol dude as well as... Uh, yeah. Um, before I forget about that, I'm going to go get that item. Then I'm going to drop down to the other side of the little... Um, canal? I don't know what to call it. The little, like drop <laughs> and I'll go back back through that like little door that we came through it's just shiny over there probably because of a shield or something but I don't think there's an item on that side quite yet okay it's over here oh sweet another undead bone shard that's definitely definitely worth picking up wow Oh, I'm lucky that thing didn't wake up because that was that was terrible and I don't even really feel like that was my fault Okay And then you Kasky said yeah, they're hard to use on PvP, but are still very effective in PvE uh, Soliloquy says that the Karthus curved sword with the bleed infusion was the meta at one point. Yeah Karthus curved greatsword blood infused is nasty there's a lot of enemies that are immune to bleed or have high resistance, so it's a bit selective. A Max says, what areas do I still have left to do? The DLCs and the archives, at least, you're guessing? Yeah, I mean, we haven't done the archives yet because we haven't, like, finished this area. So we still have our Arc Dragon Peak and the DLCs and, like, everything else after the main point of here. And... Elda says, who the hell did Lothric fight if they needed giant wyverns? You mean demons live underground and mortals are pansies? Uh, it could be that they just like having power. What the? He just teleported. That was worse than a dog. That was way worse than a dog ever was. Oh, oh. Damn it. And I missed it. I was just all sorts of messed up there, wasn't I? I don't even need to kill this guy, but I'm going to do it. Or not. Or not. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Uh, so you said that is an item by the bonfire? He said, are you planning on doing a Japanese comparison like with Bloodborne? Yes, to a certain extent. Probably not like quite at the same level, but I mean, I have done a decent amount of descriptions. A lot of them are kind of minor. Some of them are a bit more major and there'll be a lot to talk about. So if I did more Dark Souls stuff for now, I would probably have it be similar to like the last video I did. But I do want to look at some more of the thematic stuff as well. It just takes a, t a while to like go through everything, try to decide what's important, uh, what I want to group together, and then actually like making the video. So right now I'm in the process of, of getting the footage mostly. So this is the way that I kind of like to work. I like to get the footage for the most part that I can, because that way I can just go back to things later and just get what I need on a as needed basis. That's kind of a terrible way to phrase it, but uh, um, I don't know, it's just, it's just kind of easier for me to work this way, to not have to worry about getting completely new footage for a new video, just kind of working with a library that I've already built up and only like getting the small amount that I need as I need it. So, okay. This is the Sniper Crossbow. It's a long range, heavy crossbow used by Kareem Snipers. It's lengthy base and makes aiming difficult and accurate usage requires a trained dexterous hand. So that's a... Not a ton of info, but it's interesting that it points out that it was used by Kareem snipers. And I think they were associated with the Way of White. It's been a while. And so, yeah, going back to the, the whole thing of like the Dark Souls translations, like uh, because I'm not as familiar with the overall lore of Dark Souls, I don't always know what is relevant to making uh more lore like more focused lore videos as far as like the differences in translations go so that's kind of why i'm like going through dark souls 3 again and like looking at all the items and trying to pay a bit more attention to the enemy placement 
Uh, let me check this out. Okay, I'll, I'll go level up. Oh yeah, and then use the bone shard. Yeah, so those are my thoughts for now. Um, I do want to do like the big theme videos, like I said, and then I might do like a, a few smaller of like the the translation ones where I'm like looking at specific items and like what the differences could imply. And Elda says, "What's cooler, trick weapons or weapons with uh weapon arts?" I mean, I'm a fan of the tricked weapons. I didn't really play Dark Souls Two where I could um, like appreciate the weapon arts as well. And like in Dark Souls Three, like you guys see that I'm just kind of ignoring it for the most part. So I'm probably a bad person to ask, honestly. Welcome. Why use lot move when few move do trick? Probably need more vigor with as quickly as I'm dying right now. Farewell, Agni. Ah. Ashen one. Oh. Okay, so that should be good for now. Double back. Now Merc says, you like trick weapons because you get different moveset when transformed, and transforming itself can be an attack. Yeah, that's one of the things that's really cool about the trick weapons. Especially, like, when you look at people who finally, like, figure out how to play well with, like, the saw cleaver and use its transformation uh, to, like, build up, like, the beast meter and everything. Like, there's a lot of, uh, subtlety that goes, goes into hands with the trick weapons, depending on which ones you use, but... Condi V Lad says, uh, maybe it wasn't up to Lothric to choose the Wyverns. Perhaps Osiris originally tamed the Wyverns and put them there. Yeah, and that's a, a good possibility as well that um, the Wyverns were more of a, a thing that Osiris was trying to do since he was like trying to research the path of the, of the path of the dragon. I think that's uh, definitely a fair interpretation one can make of events. And also, welcome back to the stream. Uh, Kasky says, Aquamarine Dagger and Crucifix of the Mad King resembles trick weapons. Oh, really? Damn, crossbow snipers rather than the normal bow snipers. Maybe that's why they have the exploding bo bolts? I don't know. So we can't go through this drawbridge. Not drawbridge. What's it called? Drawgate. Quite yet. So. That's pretty much the first part of this area. Out of the way. And then we we're going to get ganked. I'll probably climb up here again. I like how goofy, like, the little punch animation is. <laughs> oh god. Like this. Oh, that's got better tracking than I was expecting. Curious how... Ooh, I was super low. Yeah. Enemies here do hit quite a bit harder. <laughs> I think there's more up there. Yeah, okay. Do I got lucky? Go. I didn't think there was anything over there, I just wanted to double check. I'm glad I was shielding, because that would have uh, been annoying. Random old longsword, and so this area connects all the way back over there, so... It's a little bit unfortunate that I had to go through the gauntlet rather than the easy way, but... I screwed up by being indecisive. And Cassie says, also the Splitleaf Glaive as well as Gale's Greatsword. Yeah, the only unfortunate thing about like Gale's Greatsword is it's Gale's Greatsword, so you have to go through so much of the game to even get it. Gale Pine Resin, which does like Frost. Did that just say talk? It just said open. 
This this one's pointing towards me, guys. We might we might be in luck. I'm remembering we need the Lloyd Lloyd's talisman. Damn it. Is that the ones from outside come in too when they hear that? Night Night Scale. What do I want to switch it with this, probably? What am I doing? The Lloyd's Talisman? Is it Lloyd's Talisman or is it just the Undead Hunter Charm? This is the same thing, isn't it? Does it matter? Uh, the Dual Charm or the Undead Hunter Charm? Maybe I should just try both. I'll catch up with you guys as well. Abyarki says, how did I learn Japanese? I assume you're a fluent speaker. Uh, I, I don't like to call myself fluent just because I know how much I, I don't know still. But uh, I first started on my own in high school. Then I went to college for it. And then after that, I studied on and off on my own uh, for the most part. And I worked, a, I worked in Japan briefly as an interpreter. Um, so yeah. I do have a little bit of experience, but I mean, I, I could be a lot better and especially with my speaking and just like producing it with, uh, uh, yeah, just speaking it out loud. It's, it's a lot easier to understand than it is to like produce a language when you speak it sometimes. And Venom says, gameplay question, when do I go full attack? Why don't I just two hand my weapon? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. Just because, uh. It doesn't, I don't know, the, the time for switching the weapon just doesn't feel too fluid to me yet. Burial Blade flashbacks. And Soliloquy says, Osiris would absolutely love all the dragon butts and lost Isolith. It'd be like a superheated strip club for him, hello mayo. Uh, Power Gaming Central, welcome back. He said, that's your main gripe with the later Souls games like Dark Souls 3 and Bloodborne. The weapons that are really cool turn up so late that the game is nearly completely over already when you get them. Yeah. At least in Dark Souls, you can, like, drop them or have others drop them into your game. So, that's a huge improvement. Um, it's just really unfortunate, like, you don't... you No matter what you do, you can never, like, play through, like, a completely, like, new version of Bloodborne with, like, some of the cooler trick weapons. Because that's one thing that I'd absolutely love. And Infant Manatee says, The dual charm doesn't work on Mimics, it takes away buffs. Okay. Urkan, or cool. welcome to the stream. You said, hello, you're so happy to catch a stream of yours. Watch all my content with joy and wonder. Well, thank you very much for such a nice and wonderful comment. Glad you're able to join us. And Elder Gustav says, Osiris would <laughs> spend his whole treasury at the lava butts. <laughs> yes, he says, the pain you have to go through to get the blood letter early. Yeah, yeah, like doing an early Ludwig, it just almost kind of like negates the, uh, the need to really like use one of the later game weapons. So it's not the Undead Hunter one. I want to use the Dual Charm then. Cause... Yeah, I'm going to assume that's it. Because there's no other like real Lloyd Talisman in Dark Souls 3, I don't think. So what do I want to do? I want to hit it, run away, and then do it? Maybe. Okay, Let let's try it out. It didn't work, guys. It didn't work. It did not work. Those bastards lied to me. <laughs> that just seemed to piss it off. He got angry. So don't kill it. Let's try the other one. Oh, it was that one. It was totally that one. Holy shit. That's super cool. You can also farm the other crap with it? Does this stuff stay? <laughs> Am I gonna get 
Wrecked for putting on my torch. Oh! Woke up. So cute. Wait, did the item go? I thought it had like another item on it. That's interesting. That's weird. Oh, thank you guys for telling me that. That was so cool. <laughs> I never would have thought to do that on my own. I wonder how people like figure that stuff out without like data mining. No first playthroughs with the Rikuyo Pepe hands. It's the other talisman, the white one. Okay. Yeah, yawns. Uh, Max says you can keep hitting it with a Lloyd's talisman until I get the symbol of avarice. You can't farm other loot though. Okay. But we did get those scales, which was kind of mind blowing. Soul of a Wary Warrior, so we get the Red Eyed Knight over the Yaw. And this is the little elevator. Or no, this opens the drawbridge? What am I thinking of the elevator? I don't know. So, yep, yeah, we drop down here. And I don't remember. We can cheese him? I think we can actually like walk up behind him, but I think the other dudes will stop us mess with us a little bit oh so there's one down there all right damn it Two hand in his crap. Oh, he has lightning. Oh, he's got a lot of health because he's got red eyes. What am I doing? Ooh, I got lucky. I think now these might be the statues. Oh, no, not yet. Another dude down here. Yeah. That was, that was a goof. Oh, sweet. The buff ran out. <laughs> Round, and then we're going to get you. The audacity. That that was satisfying. Just the the whole wind up without it blocking. All right, so that's that for this little section right here. Now let's go back to chat. Nymphalies wants a pet mimic. So cute, kills it. I mean, you you guys know how these runs go. I thought about like just having a compilation of me killing NPCs as a uh, part of my be right back screen, but I, I didn't do that, at least not yet. Because <laughs> honestly, like some of it just looks like really depressing. Like uh, I was looking at the, the footage of me killing Siegbird. 
the first time. <laughs> Let's be clear. I don't think there's anything over here. So we can unlock the bonfire to the next area already, can't we? Okay, I remember this will be the thing, the elevator. I'll just send this down for now. I can't do it yet. Of course. But there's another enemy in this area as well. Maybe it's this chest. No, that one's pointing backwards. Rusted coin, so this shouldn't be deadly. Finite scale. It looks like this is more of like a churchy type area because of like all these pews. They're like all pointed this way, which is kind of interesting. So if I remember correctly, maybe the way out of this window will lead down to that drop where we saw that corpse with the two knights surrounding it from way, way earlier. The red tear stone ring. Which we'll check that out in a second. I, I don't think it's too different from the blue one, but... Yeah, okay, I, I remembered. Somewhat. I'm not going to worry about that right now. At least not until I unlock a little bit more of the area. I thought there was another way to access the shortcut, but I might just be misremembering. Okay. Mr. X, welcome to the streams. You said there is no reward there. You can't activate that until I reach L Lorien and Lothric, the Twin Princes. Okay. I do remember it goes like down further, so I guess it's just for once we get to that point. Sunlight Metal. Oh, this is the one I was thinking of. And so the Sunlight Metal is super cool. Okay. And I should probably have uh, stepped on top of the top of this. I think that's only the other one. Yarky said, when was the last time I played this game? That's a very good question. Uh, I don't remember. But it, it's been a couple years at the very least. Um, I know the game is five years old now, so maybe I played it like a little bit over a year after its first release. Um, I actually forgot that I bought it on uh, the PS4 because I think I went on deployment. Like, I think I bought it, went on deployment and just forgot about it. And then after I got out, I was like, oh, I haven't played this game. So I went back to go and buy it. But I was like, what? It's already in my library. And I was just confused. Yeah, so that's the slowest elevator in the history of the world. I remember that now because it goes up to the dragon slayer armor is annoying okay so that was the little shortcut that i wanted can't open this from this side yet and we need to drop down that way this is the wyvern what can we we can see the pus down there and that's awesome let's actually try to pull out the binoculars again god five years already damn yeah so the fifth year anniversary happened on the 24th so just this week and that caught me by surprise because that's also like the return to yarnum event and uh so yeah this is probably the best better indicator so yeah you guys might have been right that once the pus comes out of the wyverns they become inactive Ooh, i almost fell off which is crazy because it, it just shows that like they're kind of like puppets <laughs> in a way and that the pus is what animates the, the wyverns. That's so crazy. And I, I, I didn't pick up on that my first playthrough. Like, I do kind of remember killing that thing there. But I'm pretty sure I shot maybe the green one with arrows and then the other one died and I didn't think about it. Chunk. I thought there were like some weird enemies up here. Yeah, okay. Okay, we've got a lot of this here. Right, actually, let's check out the scenery a little bit. It looks kind of cool. Hmm. 
<laughs> trying to decide if this can be like a, a decent wallpaper or something for like a, a be right back or starting soon screen. I don't know. Okay. It seems like up here some of them are more stationary. That's kind of a, a decent like shot of it actually. Interesting. Okay. And Mr. X says you always used a bow with fire arrows here. More sexy dragon fo footage. <laughs> footage. I'll, I'll allow it. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely don't remember fighting those passive men melee style, so I probably just used my bow. Because I, I remember running enough of a quality build where that wasn't going to be such an issue. Do I want to drop down here and then deal with it? No, that's where I came up. Okay. I think I just put my binoculars away. And here I think I wanted to YOLO. Oh, that's the dude I was remembering. Light Knight Shard? Okay. I was thinking like some people came up from the sides here. Oh, I remember there's like a little dude down there. Pretty. Oh, this might be the look. Eh, maybe not. Uh, Venom says, notice the pilgrim butterflies are like backwards, the ribs are coming out of the back. Yeah, that is something I noticed. Uh, I do appreciate you bringing that to like everyone's attention. Because I, I wasn't thinking too much about it. I was just like, no, that's kind of weird. But it just shows like if they were in prayer, like the things, like the, the actual butterflies popped out of their backs. Which kind of goes in line with, um, you know, the, the whole like humpback imagery of things coming out of their backs. That's kind of a, a cool thing to point out, for sure. So that one might be a, like a little bit of a better example, because you can see like it's the bones coming out of its back. So it does seem like there is like a, more of an affinity between the the wyverns and the uh, what are they called? Oh, okay, so this was the ladder I was remembering. Oh, um, maybe not. I thought there was like a need to kick something down in this area. I might be misremembering. Just fine. I remember there's like a cathedral line over there that's kind of strong. Maybe he has red eyes, maybe not. I hear it maybe below us. Knight's Ring. So, okay, that's two rings that we need to read. I'll probably check this one out if there's nothing else over here. I don't think there is. Wait, okay. So, boost attacks when HP is low versus increased damage absorption when HP is low. Yeah, so pretty much the same. This stone is said to be a tear of mourning of the goddess Kytha, and of course, tears are always more beautiful near death. Exactly the same as far as like the actual flavor text goes. So we just picked up the night ring. Ring engraved with a portrait of a knight increases strength. In Lothric, the knight has long been considered one of the three pillars of the king's rule, and were thus allowed to rear dragons. So this is the item that I was thinking about where it talks about like the people of Lothric, uh rearing the dragons or like cultivating them or whatever you want to call it so that might be something i want to double check as far as like the japanese goes which damage does it makes me do oh 10 points that's not insignificant to be honest this is a lot more defense too that's really not bad because it's actually like literally increasing the stat okay that makes sense 
It's kind of treating it more like a level that way, I guess. Uh, not sure if I want to actually equip this now. Uh, maybe? <laughs> That's probably a bad idea. I kind of think I would need to get rid of the life ring. Probably a bad idea while playing HUDless. HP. Oh, 1106 versus 1183. Ah, I might do it. That's not a ton of HP as far as like the game is concerned. All right, screw it. Um, I'll be too heavy. Never mind. <laughs> Maybe if I level up once more. Uh, Venom says it's like they bent backwards until their heads are upside down. Basically, the posture Nightbot Nightbot wants you to have. No, that's the posture that Nightbot warns you against. The banana shaped. Punk posture. Oh, that was my chance. Live by the bunk, die by the bunk. So this is the uh, closed door from earlier. And we oh, we also picked up the sunlight medal. I would have completely forgotten had it happened for that little statue, which is awesome. One's pointing backwards. Night scales. So this is the broken statue that was in Dark Souls 1 as well. So this is the Altar of Sunlight. So this is supposed to most likely represent like the Nameless King. And uh, yeah. You could find this one next to where like the Wyvern shows up in Dark Souls 1 as well. So no, this is the actual talisman. That a covenant item that should be a consumable. Okay. This is a medal received by the members of the Warrior of Sunlight Covenant for victory over the final foe when summoned. The summoner also gains the same medal. The medal, engraved with the holy symbol of the sun, is slightly warm and reminds one of the great honor of a shared victory. So pretty cool stuff. Let's pray. Praise the sun, of course. Let me actually switch some of these out now. I don't want point forward with the bow. Dignified bow. Okay, that's I like. And maybe this one with praise the sun. Joyce. There it is. The iconic praise the sun. I should probably do it in front of it. So yeah, that reduces my hollowing because I'm like transferring my curse into the stone. I've never shown that off, at least in, in this playthrough. It's uh, pretty uh, nostalgic stuff if you've played Dark Souls 1. Mr. X says, Covenant ahead, Knight's Ring is pretty good. Use Ponta's right eye with the sharp cell sword twin blades during, during PvE. Can I get live by the bonk, die by the bonk kind of shirt? Maybe. I don't, I don't know how I feel about actually, like, merchandising stuff. Uh, Venom says, sexy nameless king feet footage. Oof. Sure, but you might get bonked if you wear it. Isn't that the goal, to get bonked? <laughs> Ninvalius has accepted their fate. Uh, Merc says, has anyone noticed by the feet of the statue looks like a summon sign, kind of? Maybe just you. Or by the feet of the statue. Uh, so you mean, like, this thing right here? Or something else? So I think I was saying it, I don't remember if I like finished my thought. So this statue was maybe a bit more of a thing in Dark Souls 1. Uh, you could find it over by the... I mean, it was the, it was the same, like, uh, Spears of Sunlight Covenant, essentially, but it was next to where the Wyverns were. So it's kind of interesting that this uh, Covenant appears next to where the Wyverns are in this game. So... Alright, with all of that out of the way, I think it's time to deal with this extra one although I don't know what's my HP at 
I swear, if I die from this drop, I'm going to be a little bit upset. So after we deal with this wyvern, I'll probably go back to the bonfire and then save scum to deal with the uh, the boss of the area. So, but before I do that, I'm probably going to equip the sword with some flame. I was going to be pretty upset if that killed me. It almost did. We okay. In that time I wasn't like all knocked on the ground from killing it. More large titanite shards. This one's pointing forward. Sunlight straight sword. Sweet. So a straight sword imbued with the strength of lightning. This featureless long sword contains the very power of the sun, perhaps as a relic of one sided adoration. So that reference to one-sided adoration is probably more like a supposed to be understood as a reference to Solaire and his wish to become so gloriously incandescent. So as this has a unique skill, the Oath of Sunlight, raise the sword aloft when praising the sun to boost attack and damage absorption for self and allies in vicinity. The warriors of sunlight are cooperators from an ancient age. Uh, pretty more, uh, well, uh, what was I saying? Pretty much just some more uh, Dark Souls 1 stuff over there. Braille Divine Tome of Lothric. Okay, so that's probably why we didn't finish off Arena's quest. Get some of that cool panning footage right there. Not that I think it's like super important. <laughs> so we can visit Arena. And I think that's pretty much it for this area then. I'm gonna... I don't think this connects right back to where we were. I need to go through, through it somewhat. Okay. Fortunately, we did unlock this little uh, shortcut. So yeah, definitely had a rough beginning, but <laughs> finally got my bearings, hopefully. Although, to be honest, I think uh, the first time I fought the Dragon Slayer armor, that was the boss that might have actually given me the most trouble in the game. But I think it was mostly because I was being greedy, and it, he just kept catching that. So I might crash on this boss, actually, which would be kind of funny. Because I think I even had issues on like the mob version of him in, in the Ring City. Effort Festin says, when FromSoft has run out of ideas to make a decent successor to Solaria to justify the inclusion of the Sunlight Covenant again. Gabriel said, is the Shadow Glitch still a thing? I don't know what Shadow Glitch you're talking about. Use the fire paper? I did. Uh, surprised they didn't just recycle him like they did Siegbird. Yeah, that's a, a fairly decent <laughs> point to bring up. I would have expected that to happen too. Oh, no, no, no. If I jump down, I'm going to die. So I'm going to go back to uh, Firelink for now, and then I'm going to let the dog out because she's uh, groveling. So I'll be back in a few minutes, and then uh, we'll start the boss fight, and I'll, I'll save before that too. So, okay, I'll be right back, guys.
Alright, I'm back. Sorry for the delay. And what was I going to do? Was I going to level up? Yeah, it must have been. Yeah, I'll just keep dumping into Vigor since we've got our strength so high. How much do I need? I like 6,000. Been a while since I've used some of these souls. I have no idea how much I'm going to get. Okay. Welcome. Very dead Haken. Farewell, me. Bring the nice ring. With. Okay, and we're still underweight. Sweet. That'll be good enough, I think. Ashen one. I'll teleport, or not teleport. I'll get us back to the boss door, and then that's when I'll go to, um... What's it called? Uh, I'm blanking. Uh, that's when I'll save Scum. So that way, if, if I end up killing the Dragon Slayer dude uh, quickly, I can just reload it and I might want to summon just for the third person perspective. All right, so going back to chat, uh, Keebler says, This might be a hot take, but you think Siegbert is better than Siegmeier? I agree. I mean, Siegmeier, he's just kind of there, whereas, like, they kind of combined uh, Solaire as well as uh, Siegmeier into Siegbert. So I, I do think <laughs> he's definitely the best of the three. Effervescent says, the best co-op offhand non-shield catalyst in the game right there. <laughs> that's quite uh, specific. Mr. X says, that's the only time you need to complete Arena's quest? Okay, that's cool. Interesting. Thank you. And where are we going? We're going to go this way. Drop down. And then up the elevator. Uh, Merc says, the Dragon Slayer gives you a lot of trouble because he's <laughs> like a total turtle. Yeah. And then Vaylee says, you feel like they didn't recycle him to preserve that sense of nostalgia in a sense. Oh yeah, to make Solaire like stay Solaire. Yeah, I get that. Uh, my character doesn't have a shadow in Hollow? Really? That's interesting. I'm going to double check that when that happens. So yeah, totally have a shadow now. And, oh, I may as well ember up before we do it. And I think we get a summon sign, like, right out here. I don't remember who we can summon, though. Or maybe that's just, like, where players tend to do it. I thought there was, like, a summon really close. Might take a minute to, sh to show up. But, yeah, that's not too important right now. I'm going to go ahead and save out. Uh, for Khan says, you prefer the sitting animation of the Maiden in Black from Demon Souls, especially how she dangles her feet. So adorable. The Emerald and Herald in Dark Souls 2 does that too. Uh, you never noticed you didn't enjoy Dark Souls 2 that much due to the ADP mechanic. Uh, it feels bad that people don't enjoy Dark Souls 2, and I say that as one of them. <laughs> yeah. It's just kind of funny that it, it's, it's such a common sentiment. And Keebler says Egon and Sirius can be summoned for this fight. Okay. Oh, e Egon can actually help us? That's cool. I didn't know that. Mr. X says the Pilgrim Butterflies above Dragon Slayer armor supposedly may be from the Pilgrims like Yule of Londor. Yes. So the summon sign is on the roof. Okay. Thought I remembered that. Yeah, I don't summon in these games very often, so it's it's easy for me to forget who is where or not be aware of who was where. 
especially in Bloodborne because they only added like a lot of the summonable, summonable NPCs after the DLC was released. So to me, I don't like because of my experience with Bloodborne, I don't like hold a lot of the summons as, as canon. Whereas like in Dark Souls 3, they probably do have a more canon role with where they are, especially with like Henri and like her help with uh, Aldrich and all that. And you're welcome. Thank you again. Uh, Effervescent says, You can summon Sirius, but you think I forfeited her quest. Yeah, I did. I mean, I wasn't too worried about it. I probably should have killed her, but I was also a bit curious if she's going to show up again at all later. So I left her be. <laughs> the one act of can kindness I've shown an NPC in this trilogy. <laughs> Rakan says, You like the take on the undead curse and the lore of King Vendrick, but yeah, you don't know of any of the fans of the game except for me. Okay. Where was it? You said on the roof? Fiddler on the roof. We're still embered up. But on the different section of the roof. I don't know. Hmm. Oh, do I need to actually be a warrior of sunlight? Let me re-equip that. Because I forgot. I know right now I'm offline, so I'm not too worried about, like, rando people joining. Oh, I'm so tempted to try to backstab it. I don't even want to summon now, I just want to know that. Okay, in here, okay. So Egon, that's cool. I might summon him later then, just to see what he does. Or how he does. Sirius helps with Dragon Slayer armor if you follow through her quest. So her summon sign might have been on the roof then. Effervescent says, Dark Souls 2 does have the best PvP once you get to 3 million soul memory. Egon sign is in the building to the right of the elevator. Okay, thank you. Ah yes, the soul memory mechanic has the taste of grinding. Here we go. Plus, I guess this dude does have lightning. Forget some of his attacks. Like, I remember he's pretty punishable, I just always got too greedy with him. Oh, that killed me. Okay. Wasn't too worried about that. I was going to try to show off some of his moves anyway. And if we get to see the um, butterflies fly away again, that'd be cool too. Because, I mean, I definitely didn't notice the dumb butterflies my first playthrough. And it's really not clear, I think, even with what we've just seen, that they're supposed to be, like, strictly connected to the to the armor set right there. This is kind of weird. I don't think I sent the elevator back down. The, the pro strats right there. What was I doing? That way. Okay. So Luke, says, one of the few bosses in the game that's weak to Frost. Interesting. He's definitely got, like, a lot of the whole, like, Havel um, appearance going on. With all, like, the stone crap and being a dragon slayer and all that. So Venom says, uh, you love the concept of the kingdom, each failing for different reasons, or falling for different reasons, and you learning from that to become a ruler. You wish the game had leaned into that, not into linking the flame again. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like, Dark Souls 2's lore is pretty cool. I just wish mechanically it was more, 
Um, thrilling? Engaging might be the better word. I don't know. Oh, and we did die, so maybe I want to check out my shadow a little bit to see if it starts to fade. And then Professor Gomez, welcome back. You said, greetings, sorry you're late. Making a new mage build, you find it a little complicated how Dark Souls 3 deals with sorceries and dark sorceries. You find Demon Souls easier to understand, but you're learning. Yeah, I've never actually done, like, the, uh, the builds with the, the magic, so... I might need to do that sometime, just to see, like, how different it is. I'll just Ember up, because I've got a crap ton of them. And then Venom asks what you're having difficulties with. Right, here we go. We can see that there's the one, and it flies away, and the three come up. This dude's a big boy, so I don't think he can actually be parried. Ooh, get squished by a big old shield, though. Interesting. Got pretty good tracking. I don't know what I've got. Oh, I switched it to the binoculars. <laughs> I didn't trust myself. Oh yeah, you can totally get yeeted off the side of this arena. I forgot about that. So that was not a riposte animation. <laughs> Oof, I forgot how that worked. So we're in phase two. So I whiffed that, good to know. Oh, the butterflies do stuff. I forgot about that crap. Interesting. Oh, was not expecting that. The song right there kind of reminds me of Abritus' theme. We get gonked by all this junk in the sky. I could have punished that, I think. Oh, didn't have enough stamina. All right, here we go. Get away from the wall. enough stamina for that, which is fine. Okay. I'm learning, I'm learning. Thought that was going to be it. Sweet. Okay, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah, definitely a lot better than my uh, first attempts in this game. So, uh, yeah, that was the Dragon Slayer armor, and as we come into this area, we do get some more interesting looking statues, like this little uh, floppy eared guy right over here with wings. He looks like a, a serpent with wings, which was probably more related to the stuff that was going on with the Pilgrim Butterflies in like the pre-release build of the game that like Lance restored. And I, I know Jerk Sands Frontiers talked about it in one of his uh, videos, like, that I think uh, the Warlord tried to show me with the um, the Bastard's Curse. So, yeah, there's a good possibility that the people of Lothric were influenced by Koth or the other Primordial Serpents, potentially, into doing what they're doing 
whatever it is that they're doing. But th those ideas might have been walked back since we know that the serpents are now dead, according to like Uriah's dialogue, at least Koth. And uh, as for this one, I don't know what to make of this kind of like melted being. Kind of interesting to think about. And then I'll, I'll read uh, his soul right there as well. Yeah, I totally forgot that the pilgrim butterflies were a factor in the game. Or like in, in the, the fight right there. So yeah, pretty pleased with that, getting it on the second try. So I might just jump to my death a couple times just to see if the shadow disappears. And then I'll uh, reload with uh, Egon. Okay, going back to the chat. Ooh, there's a lot. Okay. Uh, Mr. X's favorite weapon in Bloodborne is the Saw Spear, by the way. The Saw Cleaver is OP as well. The Saw Spear is pretty much just like the Dex Saw Cleaver, essentially. Uh, for Connor, Cool says that you agree with Embargo, but it is understandable that they didn't change the content that much because FromSoft had the game designed by their beta team with Dark Souls 2. Uh, Power Gaming Central says Frost is one disappointing status effect. It is on some really cool weapons, but works on nearly no boss at all, which makes the weapons feel like a trap because their status often does not help. Yeah, I really did like the Irithyll Straight Sword, and it's really cool that it has like the Frost effect, but um, other than that, I'm not too sure what else like Frost is even good on. Uh, Condi Vlad says, You saw translated lyrics of the Dragon Slayer's armors theme, and you're not sure how accurate they were, but you remember them stating that the Pilgrim Butterflies are the ones that's singing, and that they're inviting you to kill the Dragon Slayer armor that was corrupted by the Abyss. Um, that's interesting. Just like my hot take would be, I wouldn't think that the Pilgrims wanted the armor to be killed, because why weren't they shooting the armor then? I don't know, it's kind of a fucked up way to try to get the armor to die, kill the dude that's trying to kill the armor. But yeah, as far as my, my take on the Latin lyrics is like, I, I've, I've never really trusted them just because like, from what I've heard from like other Latin speakers, like there's probably a lot of errors in the grammar that the Latin is, is used from like the, the part of the developers. So it's, there's a language barrier that extends beyond just like latin to english as far as like perhaps like japanese to latin then latin to english it, it seems like a, a game of telephone so um i think that it's kind of cool to get maybe some like general ideas of the, what the theme is going for but yeah I've, I've never really trusted them too much myself just because the general consensus that i've seen is like they're never 100 percent sure if like they're actually correct and not even just because like of the latin it's just because they don't have the lyrics themselves, so it, there's also issues like trying to transcribe it auditorily, and, as well as then trying to figure out like the actual grammar of whether or not that's even correct in the first place. But yeah, still cool stuff to look at though. Uh, Venom says they did rewrite the whole story after the change in the director, and they actually seem to have made it more like Dark Souls One. Uh, Mr. X says uh, fast weapons work better against this guy in your case anyway. So yeah, I mean. I typically did like the the broadsword as my first uh, playthrough weapon of choice, and so going through with like this big weapon is is kind of a different or interesting change in uh, pace for me. Uh, for Khan says, cool fact actually, you didn't know of the change in the writing of the story. Do you know why the director was changed, Venom? And then Venom says. Uh, you never f it was never fully revealed, but it seems to be a combination of delayed development and the higher-ups at FromSoft not liking the direction he was taking with the game. So the second director basically had to glue together the assets that had already been created into a new game with a new story. Oof. Floppy ears for getting Koth and Framps ep epic jowls? Was that actually supposed to be their cheeks? I always thought it was supposed to be their, their ears. They're kind of floppy-eared. I mean, I guess it would make sense if those were, like, supposed to be the cheeks, but I guess also not, because they're snakes. It's weird. I mean, I thought they were supposed to be, like, emblematic of, like, wise mustaches, but whatever. And Mr. X says, how do I fight with no HUD? Uh, I mean, I've gotten used to it at this point. Like, uh, I've got a decent a sense of how much HP I have. Well, not so much, like, coming into the newer areas, but uh, one ring that helps is the the blue tier stone ring because that'll show when I'm at below 30% HP. And so when that comes up, oh, I forgot to use the, the bone shard. When that comes up, I know that I need to heal twice to get back to full HP and then I don't worry so much. 
So typically I'll wait it to get hit maybe once or twice, depending on like the severity of the hit to heal. And so, I mean, you, you just kind of develop your own like system and you get your own feel for the game. So. Uh, Mr. X said, Vati video talked about them as well. Okay. And for Khan says, so the possibility of the different storyline you were hoping for was an option during production, most likely. Venom says, the melted being looks like a Lothric scholar to you covered in wax. Oh, wax is a good idea. I'll, I'll take a double, uh, another look at that in a moment. Uh, Keebler says, the melted being statue might have to do with the grand archives and the wax that the scholars have on. Thank you both. Uh, Venom says, the original story seemed to involve time travel. That's mostly what you know. The concept survived into the final game as the giant memories. Okay. And that's what you're betting on? This, the serpent seemed to have been to influence the scholars a fair bit. Okay. Yeah, because the, the Grand Archives, like, it was a really cool area to me, but I don't remember, like, the lore there very much at all, to be honest. So I'm kind of interested to see what we get from, with that again. <laughs> For Khan says, the memory bit of Dark Souls 2 is actually the only good part now. How sad. Uh, for Khan, no, you're fine with bringing up, like, Dark Souls 2 stuff. Like, that doesn't bother me at all. Like, I mean, it, it's tied into the game's... I just wish I knew a bit more about it so I could, like, talk about it. But, I mean, I mean, I knew what hole I was digging going into Dark Souls 3 and p doing the lore through without, like, playing Dark Souls 2. So, yeah, I, I don't mind at all whatsoever. And Mr. X says, you did use an ultra against the Nameless King since the Drake staggers after five or six hits. Okay. So, yeah, that'll be fun to do the Nameless King with uh, this build as well. It's definitely a very different experience uh, being able to stagger so many more enemies, like, so easily. But by the same token, it's a lot more punishing when you run out of stamina yourself and uh, get punished. So this is the Soul of the Dragon Slayer Armor. One of the twists I keep reading that. The Dragon Slayer Armor, controlled by the Pilgrim Butterfly, lost its master long ago, but still remembers their sporting hunts. So yeah, this is the pretty much like the only description in the entire game that talks about Pilgrim Butterflies, if I remember correctly. And there's really nothing else beyond that, so... Just kind of shit out of luck to understand how that goes. Uh, how do I want to do this? <sighs> do I want to die now? Uh, maybe I'll, I'll do the bon... Yeah, let's just use the bonfire that's right here. Duh. One of the two of them. Forget that it's a thing. So it looks like I don't have a, a shadow right here. Which I mean, I might be in the shade of the building, which isn't that big a deal, but... Okay, there's my shadow over there. So yeah, maybe the building sh shadow overrode it. If that's supposed to be wax, that could be fitting. We'll see. So I think I need to die three more times to become fully hollowed. And then I'll reload, uh, summon Egon, and then um, we'll look at the Dragon Slayer's armor, the Dragon Slayer's soul, after we do that stuff. Can't jump off right again. Meh. That's unfortunate. Well, luckily I did send down the slowest elevator in the world. Oh, uh, yeah, I'll get that item. No, I'll probably forget. So let me check what this dumbass item is. And then I'll die to the knights down there. Because otherwise I feel like I'll forget. Kytha's chime. Oh, that's, that's going to be important. Okay, let's check it out. So sacred chime blessed by Kaitha, goddess of tears, rare even amongst Karim clerics. Affected by intelligence, a rare thing for miracle catalysts, and also agreeable with miracles that lean towards the dark. His existence is concealed in the name of the archbishop, as it is anathema. Anathema, whatever. Um, I'm going to equip it.
Cause it, it almost looked like there's a tree at the very, like bottom of it, like at the tip of it, whatever. So maybe looking at it, like the 3D model, we can see it. Double damage. Weird. All right. Well, that that that's good enough. If Rakan says those white actors need a serious race for that agonizing scream, uh, Tanner, welcome back to the chat. You said, hey, LP, hey, chat, how's everybody doing today? Uh, so we just finished up with the, well, I guess not finished. We just killed the Dragon Slayer armor, which is pretty cool stuff. And so I'm going to see if, like, this uh, glitch of losing the shadow when she become more hollowed is true. It looks like it's true. That might actually be lore. I don't know if that's actually a glitch. Because we still get, like, the glowing effect off of us. And so, yeah. That's crazy. Ooh. I'm trying to think of like how that works because I don't think like you gain humanity from the purging stones it's like you're removing your curse so you're not gaining anything so it's weird that you would like be able to gain the shadow like I had a thought about it but I'm just kind of like losing it off the top of my head right now Uh, for Khan says, looks more like a winged creature, no? Uh, which creature again? And Venom says, it's not a glitch. It only happens in Dark Souls 3, but when you hollow, you lose your shadow and reflection. And reflection? Like in water? Okay. Kind of like a vampire. So you, both you and Khan, do you say that? That's, that's crazy. That's uh, very deliberately done, though. So if you lose your reflection because you, you're hollow, I could see that being reflected with... Um, one of the things that I looked at with Dark Souls 1's translations the other day was like a dark orb and dark bead talk about like um, the nature of humanity is closer to reality. So that was a cool thing to think about. So like, at least in, in Dark Souls 1, when you had humanity, that was like, you know, not being hollow. So maybe you're like closer to the, the essence of the world or whatever. Whereas like here, if you're not hollow, like I think maybe that same principle applies, which would be like, you're more substantial, which is why you have a shadow. And the same is true of, like, the reflection. Although the reflections is really trippy. Like, the shadow thing, I think, is just really cool with, like, you know, the shadow is born of the flame. And so this is just kind of, like, the flame's projection of you because you're more substantial or something like that, or you're closer to the flame. Something along those lines is what I was thinking, but I, I don't know a better way to kind of articulate that thought off the top of my head. So for Khan says, so to go hollow means literally being so hollow that light passes through you. And you mean the winged creature on Kytha's chime. Oh, okay. I said it resembles a tree. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll take another look at that. So that could be an interesting thought as well. So yeah, I don't know if you go so hollow that light passes through you as much as like you don't have enough of a presence to have a shadow in, in comparison to the flame. You're not substantial enough. Damn it, Egon. Are you even gonna do anything, bro? Let's try to get to phase two. I got lucky. Double lucky.
Oh, I need to roll. Okay. Actually, I don't think that one probably did damage. Got me. I was gonna say he's probably gonna phase. Oh no 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 no! Not like this! Not like this! So we see the butterflies doing their crap. Okay. Oh, we missed that attack the first time around. That was super cool. And I'm, I'm a bit disappointed we looked at it from this angle. I thought I was about to get yeeted off the side. Can we do something? Oh, that's the other ones. I need to heal. I wasn't trying to drink. Alright, that was still cool, and we used Egon to be a good uh, distraction there. So that's a decent amount of footage. Uh, maybe... I uh, actually... I want to do it once more to actually show off more of his attacks. Um... Thinking... We killed him kind of quickly in, in all of them. Oh yeah, and I might want to... Eh, nah, whatever, it's fine. I don't care anymore. I was going to say I might want to show off like his little projectile attack that he did. That was kind of cool. Okay. So we got that thing again. So we need Kyther's Chime. Oh, let's go turn on the bonfire. And then rest. And then we'll go see Ludleth and all of that fun stuff over there. So Nymphalia says, A reflection is light bouncing off of a smooth object, so you guess it makes sense that if you're hollow, something fucks with the light? You don't know, honestly? Yeah, it's kind of trippy to think about. And Venom says that, Well, there were those hollows in Dark Souls 2 that were so hollow that they turned invisible. You could only find them by hitting them and killing them. Are you talking about the ones in, like, the Misty Woods? And to speak about, like, uh, hollows going in invisible and whatnot, there are those, like, ghostly-type hollow things in Irithyll, which are worth considering. Let's go get her chime again. YOLO I was trying to parry him but he didn't want to do it Okay This is good enough and Venom says, this is also what you compare those invisible slaves in Aerithil back in that stream. Okay. 
Mr. X says, do I have Toxic Mist? You can use it to kill the Crystal Sage so it doesn't teleport in the Grand Archives. After you kill it, go to the Firelink Shrine and buy all of Orbex spells. It'll give you the Slumbering Dragon Crest Ring and can be summoned to help with the Twin Princes. Interesting. Uh, I, I can't equip any spells right now, actually. So, what am I... I can level up maybe twice, but... Oh yeah, the Irithyll Slaves are comparable to Dark Souls 2 Hollows. A cool nod to it, actually. Okay. Rishan says, if you, you get a DiGiorno pizza delivered to you, is it no longer DiGiorno? Is it even still pizza? Uh, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. So, I don't think it means that even if it is delivery, it isn't DiGiorno. It just says, uh, it is DiGiorno, even if it isn't delivery. So it's the inclusive, uh... And, or the inclusive or whatever you want to call it. Found her, did we? And the black eyes that shimmer within, I see. Tis as if it were but yesterday. We did all we could to spare her from her. Much has happened since. Mayhap I should apprise thee of what the thin light of these eyes might reveal. To the eyeless firekeeper, scenes of betrayal. You guys didn't think I was gonna do it. You guys didn't believe I was gonna do it, but I did it. <laughs> so we got the skull ring again. That was honestly just a whiff of the, uh, <laughs> uh, a whiff of the moment kind of a uh, act right there. Whiff of the Cuff, whatever the thing is called. So let's try to get him with his like crying dialogue again. Wait, I actually have to reload, don't I? Okay. Cool, thank you for my pizza lore take. Was it ever pizza? DiGiorno is not food, is not even pizza. It exists somewhere in the realm between edible matter and bowel cancer. <laughs> that's a rough, that's a rough comment, but it was hilarious. I, I didn't have to kill him for the Skull Ring. No, but I had I had to kill him to, uh, you know, hurt chat. <laughs> no, but just like the Grand Betrayal. Oh, man, that was just such such good timing, though. See, not. I, I am a lord. A, a wee flame. Belike. But I shoulder the world. Forgive me. Oh. Please. I am not to blame. I'm not. Oh, that was cool. We didn't get that dialogue the first time around. He was just crying in his sleep. Ah, beg pardon. I must oh, it's different. To while. So, happened upon any twisted souls? Uh, yeah, so I'm definitely glad we killed him like that. That was a uh, pretty, pretty uh, metal, <laughs> pretty, pretty heartless. What do we? We just killed the dragon slayer. Okay. The dragon slayer armor. Oh, the Gusta says back. You think the Irithyll ghosts are just those spirits? Remember the Black Knights were ghosts at the White Tunnel of the first kill. Tanner says you sat back down and the first thing you hear is that scream. <laughs> Jesus, absolute mad lad. Lol DiGiorno hasn't got a reflection. For the Lydia, for the lore video stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's for, it's for the lore, guys. It really is. Uh, Professor says edible matter and bowel cancer. That was funny. Wait, he revives? Yeah, you just have to uh, come back to the area because I guess they didn't want you to lose out on transposition. Also, like, you need his embers for, like, linking the fire, so it makes sense to a degree. I don't know why, like, they didn't just give you, like, um, a skull or... His ember is like the other words, though. Maybe because uh, he accepts his role? I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird how that is supposed to fit together. So, yeah. This is the Dragon Slayer Great Axe. Melted iron Great Axe that once formed part of the Dragon Slayer armor. Thickly imbued with the power of lightning. Use skill to draw upon the techniques used to slay the Arc Dragons. So. I kind of zoned out while I read that, to be honest. Falling bolt, hold high, hold axe high in the air to gather fierce lightning and smash the ground to whip the bolt to the ground. 
It's weird. So it's a melted iron great axe. I wonder why it's melted. Probably because they're just used against so many damn dragons. Okay. And then the other thing. Is this great shield. Melted iron shield that once formed part of the Dragon Slayer armor. The shield offers high protection to lightning, which the Dragon Slayer commanded as his own, and its skill has faint echoes to the Dragon Slayer's own fighting style. Skill is the shield bash, which uh, is pretty straightforward. It's in the other stuff as well. Okay, so that's that for now. The eyes show a world destitute of fire, a barren plain of endless darkness, a place born of betrayal. I bet you guys thought I was so going to do it, but no, I no, I didn't. Myself, Lord, to link the fire, to paint a new vision. What is thine intent? We talked a, a lot about that before. Okay, so that was all the stuff that Dragon Slayer armor. We can level up maybe twice. Welcome so Davin Sosa, welcome back to the stream. You said great fucking weapon. Around seven hundred AR around the end of your playthrough. Very well, then take. No I don't even know where we're at now. I know we're like at the cap, so five five eighty. So if I double hand it, it'll probably like do a hell of a lot more damage. Uh, what else is it gonna do? More health because why not with a HUDless run? Like I'm not really using any other stats right now. I know uh, we could do the crystal sage strat, but I'm not too worried about that with the toxic mist. I might, you know, I might want to buff, but. More HP means less death, so that's what we're gonna go with for now, I guess. Did I level up twice? I don't remember. Yeah, okay. Oh wow, 285. So we're right there. Sweet. Anything else? Uh, for Khan says, to visualize that jamming and tossing kinda sad but still funny. No one forced him, he's rather proud of having made his way to linking the flame. Yeah, don't diss the tiniest badass. Uh, Maxman says, You believe there's a theory that Ludleth wasn't strong enough to link the flame and restore the entire world, so we created this version of the shrine as a pocket dimension kind of thing. But honestly, that sounds harder than just linking. Yeah, I was kind of thinking something along those lines, too. Eldegusto says, He tells himself that, but they gently nudged him along while piling nameless knight souls in his craw. Alright, so was there anything else? I thought there was one other thing. Oh yeah, Arena. Oh, and the, the tome. Yeah, I almost didn't read that. The Braille Divine Tome of Lotharic. Learn Miracles of Lotharic. A sacred Braille Divine... Well, a sacred Braille tome from Lotharic filled with the miracles for use by knights. Give it to a storyteller to learn Lotharic miracles. It is said that no paladins inside Lotharic Castle could fall owing to the divine protection they enjoyed. So it's a little bit hard to make out the figure on the tome itself. It kind of looks like a woman maybe in the priestess ring. Let's check that out. Uh, kinda, maybe not. No, it looks a little bit different. So we'll get some more new uh, spells to read, which is always a good time. Of course I had the binoculars out. Why wouldn't I? Where were you, Nightbot? Oh, telling me to fix my posture instead. Okay, makes sense. <laughs> uh, Effervescent says, Ludleth is actually the Bellkeeper Covenant dude from Dark Souls 2, deepest lore. Uh, what do I think happened to Guinevere? I'm not sure. I mean, she, we don't even see her in Dark Souls 1, so she could have been... AFK or like MIA for a long time. Uh, at least with the Astoran items, it does say that Guinevere, no, is the Sun Princess Ring. It mentions that Guinevere became a mother and like raised a bunch of noble children though. But other than that, we really don't get much information about her. Other than, you know, like Gwendolyn using her image to kind of trick the Chosen Undead to complete their quest. And also welcome back to the stream, Birdie. Mr. X said, give the tome and buy all miracles in that ring for her to become a fire keeper. Yeah, I remember that. I just probably should have bought her miracles before leveling up, but it's okay. We'll, we'll have a little bit of time to farm. Not that we like actually need to farm or anything. I could probably just pop all my uh, souls or yeah, the champion souls and whatnot. 
Venom says, it looks like an eagle to you, like the symbol of the old king of Lothric, like in that one shield. Professor Gomez says, there are so many weapon pyromancy, sorceries, armors, miracle staves, and chimes in Dark Souls 3, it is impossible to have them all in one run. Uh, yeah, because you do need to do multiple... It's mostly because of the soul transposition that it really becomes uh, more of a pain in the ass. And so, you pretty much need to run through the game three times, I think, total to get all of the variants. Uh, Zephyl says, you heard theories saying that Emma is the priestess in the ring. Yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Like, I, I don't disagree. I just don't know if that's tr true or not. Uh, Maxman says, although it would explain why this shrine kind of seems to exist outside of the real world and you have to travel via the bonfires to the rest of the world. But there's also time stuff involved, so you don't know. Yeah, we were talking about those kind of possibilities a little bit uh, in the last stream when we were talking about the untended graves and how going through Lothric gives you that version. And so maybe this... Firelink Shrine is completely separate from the Lothric that we actually visit, which is kind of trippy to think about, but very interesting nonetheless. And Max says, the time stuff meaning that the woman in the red recognizes you in the main shrine if you talk to her the first time in the dark shrine. Yeah. Uh, Nymphaly says, can't I double tap or hold down the scroll button for consumables and automatically put it to the first consumables? You're not sure you mainly use keyboard. I don't know. I'm not too worried about it. Like, I don't use a ton of the consumables, and when I do, I just go to the hot menu. Uh, Mr. X says, Twin Princess will take four runs to get all three swords. Okay. Interesting. Technically, you need to run through the game four times to get absolutely everything, because you get one of the two weapons from the Twin Princess, and they can both be transposed into one. Okay. Yeah. I knew it was like a, a really large amount. So like, I think I've gotten everything except for maybe like those ones. Cause I've, I've run through the game three times, but I don't remember if I killed all the bosses necessary to get all of the items. But I, I know I got like all of the dropped ones. So the only things I have left to do are presumably that and like the covenants on my main character. So Venom says, you, you're one of those loonies who thinks that Guinevere equals the Queen of Lothric equals Rosaria. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, but hopefully I'll have maybe a more, more of a stronger opinion. Wow, that's terrible English. Maybe I'll have a stronger opinion once we like get to the end of this playthrough. <laughs> okay, I see what you're saying, Nymphalis. Yeah, I, I'm not too worried about it. Like, I just, the only reason why I have like my down things set to the Estus and the binoculars are just so uh, I can pull them out quickly in, in battle. So I, I'm kind of fine with me screwing up, which is which. It's just part of uh, the fun of the stream, I suppose. I am a bit disappointed that you can't walk around with the binoculars, though, like you can with the monocular in, in Bloodborne. That's like my biggest complaint. That and you can't like go through the menus so much. So I have to zoom out, talk to her, then zoom in. Oh, Champion of Ash. Welcome back. Do you wish to hear a tale? You only have to ask. Okay, right, so this should be a little bit better. You know, in my home of Karim, I was a nun. I would be pleased to share the tales of miracles with you. Although, to be honest, I only know a few. Okay, this should but be good. If I had a divine tome, I could tell you many tales and more. Oh, only I cannot see. Terribly sorry, but you'll have to find me a divine tome in Braille. Okay, so we're going to give her the tome. Oh, you've brought me a Braille divine tome. Now I can tell new tales of miracles. Tales of the greater miracles can be quite the epics. What fun we will have. <laughs> These are dark tales of things that lurk deep within men. These stories would not please you. Of course, if you insist, I will read them for you. Only... Oh, oh, the these are of the little... Yeah, I forgot that oh, there was the other book in Lothric. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have given her the... I don't think I ever looked at this, actually. Um, what was I saying? With the Lothric. Yeah, I forgot there was the book in Lothric. Otherwise, I don't think I would have given her the other two books like I did originally. 
maybe I didn't on the save before Andre. Probably didn't, but so I, there, there'll there possibly be the chance for me to fix that later on if I ever really needed to with a little bit of a grinding, but not like a not like a, a completely NG plus cycle or new game cycle. But yeah, so let's check out the Saints ring. In Kareem, the Saints give voice to the ancient tales. They memorize countless cumbersome sacred books and read them in sonorous tones, a function for which they are widely renowned. Okay, so I think I did read this, maybe. And it allows attunement of additional spells. Okay. So these are the new ones, the ones with one. Bountiful Light, Miracle Taught to Knights by Gertrude, Holy Maiden to the Queen. Gradually restores a large amount of HP. The Heavenly Daughter is said to be the Queen's Child. Um... I'm trying to remember, I thought there was like something small in the Japanese that was slightly different, but I didn't think it was too significant. Maybe instead of just calling her Heavenly Ch Daughter, it was just more like, maybe it was Angel, Heavenly Angel? Oh, I don't remember. I'll, I'll, I'll need to check this out another time though. Uh, blessed Weapon, Miracle Taught to Lothric Knights. Bless his right weapon, increasing attack power, as well as gradually restoring HP. The knight is one of the three pillars of Lothric, said to have strengthened ties with the High Priestess after the scholars acquired the Grand Archive. So I forget the other two pillars, I'm pretty sure they talk about in the other items, but uh, there's the, the knights, the clerics, and something else. Maybe the king? I, I forget. That doesn't seem to that doesn't seem to ring a bell for me right now though. A magic barrier. Miracle of clerics who wield weapons. Increases magic damage absorption by covering the body in white protective coating. There was a short period in history where clerics and sorcerers opposed one another. Thus it became necessary for even simple clerics to have some means of opposing magic. Okay. And so I don't remember if this, if it's just the magic barrier that was related to Havel in Dark Souls 1 or if it is like the great magic barrier. Which we'll probably see a bit more once we go through the Arc Dragon Peak. Maybe. I don't remember exactly where it comes in. So for, for the next stream, I will probably buy all of these miracles. Not the dark ones, because that'll like ruin the quest. And we already showed that one off. So. These are dark. Okay. Have a pleasant journey. So I'll jump back to the archives. Dragon Slayer Armor. Oh, I didn't unlock the next bonfire. That's literally like three steps away. Whatever. Right. Uh, Max Man says, Come to think of it, from really love circles, don't they? Dark Sign, Pale Blood, Sky and the Moon, Elden Ring. Yeah. I mean, circles are is just like a human thing. That and like mandalas. They're like some of the basic fundamental things of like civilization and culture and art. Looking forward to Pentagon Souls. Elda says, one thing that doesn't fit is greater miracles are long epics, but you use them quickly when casting them in game. You can see the minor miracles, but it doesn't make sense to cast greater miracles. Well, maybe it's it's like you have to memorize the entire miracle to produce the effect. So it's easier to memorize small ones because I think uh, maybe in the earlier builds of Dark Souls 1, instead of calling it like spell attunement slot, it's more like spell memory slot. Or maybe that's just the Japanese that I'm confusing it with. Something like that. So, yeah, I don't think they literally say an entire miracle as they cast the spells. But I, I agree with just, like, the practicality of it. It's kind of funny to think about. Mr. X says you're talking about trying to keep all three of the swords, which is why you need the four uh, playthroughs. Uh, Gertrude was locked away and she encountered an angel. Yeah, we'll talk about Gertrude more on the next stream. Knight, Cleric, and Scholar, and the Hidden Hunters. Basically, you get both swords twice. Okay. Hunters are the hidden fourth pillar of the Black Hands. Okay, thank you guys. Mandalas are cool and all, but all the cool kids are into gondolas. Boo. So this dude looks almost like a, a carbon copy of like the Charlemagne statue in Bloodborne. Um, so this is probably taken from real life, just kind of looking at it. That wouldn't surprise me. So it's probably supposed to be King Osiris, maybe before he transformed, maybe not. So maybe this woman is supposed to be his queen, which if that is supposed to be the queen, it doesn't resemble the Guinevere that we know of very well. 
So that might be worth considering. But if it's not supposed to be her, it could be Gertrude or Emma or somebody else related to uh, Lothric. And it might not even be like Osiris. It could be King Lothric or, or something else like that. Although I think it was, he was called like Lothian essentially in Dark Souls 2. That might have inspired like this whole kingdom. But uh, with that being said, we got some more of like the goofy kings with wings. Which might be related to Osiris and, and dragons and angels, I guess. But we'll see more of that later. So we got some more like the wax statue dudes. What is this thing over here on the wall? Weird. Huh. I don't know what to make of that quite yet. And then we get another one of the uh, Primordial Serpents, most likely, because it doesn't have arms and it's got the features resembling them with the big old teeth and the, I guess, jowls and not ears. And our bonfire. Bertie Sanders says, what happened to Dusk? Well, she dead. She dead. We find all of her set down uh, in the Farron Swamp. That's pretty much all we get. Uh, she got saved by the Chosen Undead. Heard it went to Artorius, but she's still dead. She, she's still dead even in Dark Souls 1, really. <laughs> Mr. X said, you're glad you have the digital copy of this game so you can dupe items to yourself? Interesting. Why, why do you need the digital copy to dupe items? Or are you just like, like save, uh, not save state, save editing? Venom says, uh, dead. You find her corpse in Dark Souls 1. Okay, so yeah, spoiling all the fun too. El Gusto says, In Dark Souls 1 and 2, you recite ancient holy stories to perform miracles. Perhaps if you squint, they're just reciting them in their head or something, but greater miracles are a bit much. Maybe you just get better at speaking very quickly, the better you become at magic. I don't know. <laughs> Alright, so we're pretty much at three hours in, and we are at a pretty good stopping point to pick up the stream for the next time we go through. Uh, three hours is what I like to go for. Uh, and I am fine with going over for the content, but this is a good breaking point because I know like the archives here is kind of a bit to get into as far as like trying to talk about all the lore and everything. So uh, for everybody who's uh, dropped in today and lurked or said something friendly and, and nice, I appreciate all of that. And I hope to see you again next time. We will go live again at a 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow. So until then, I hope you have a good day or a good night and uh, stay safe. See you next time. Take care.